stone fences and white clabbered buildings. This is pastoral, picturesque New England. A hotbed of stock car racing? You better believe it. A quarter century these fans have waited to see these Winston Cup drivers. And finally, there's a world-class facility here to showcase their talents. All the stars are here. And so are 70,000 jacked up race fans. They've waited 25 years and they just won't wait any longer. Today, a dream becomes a reality here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Every one of these 60,000 seats were sold out on that snowy winter day when they went on sale last January. Today, New England proudly says, we too are part of the most competitive motorsports in the world. Ken Squire bidding you welcome to the biggest racing day in New England history. Now, it's a misconception to believe that we New Englanders don't like our racing. From the very beginning, there's been some great racing in this part of the country. You go back to when World War II ended and all that energy came back to these shores. That's when it started. Over in Vermont, where I was born, there were 18 tracks. Could run five nights a week, and it was pretty much that way all across the United States. But in New England, we had a unique problem. We had established sports, now the Red Sox, the Bruins, Celtics are here. Basketball was born in Massachusetts. And our newspapers told us that anything that you couldn't put through a hoop or swing at was alleged not to be a sport. My, how times have changed. Today, motorsports is accepted and appreciated on all levels. And this million dollar, 300 mile race is a crowning glory for all of us New England racing enthusiasts. A fellow New Englander is going to lead the call today. Here's Mike Joy. Thanks, Ken. Like you in my native Connecticut, racing has always been big among those who followed it. And now everyone in New England's attention is on this beautiful world-class facility. Another down Easter, well, down Eastern United States, the Alabama. That's where Neil Bonnet's from, but Neil, the reception that the folks have gotten here have been tremendous. Mike, we travel all over the country, and certainly people cater to the Winston Cup crowd, but I don't think I've ever seen as an emotional affair as this pre-race from last place to the pole, a standing ovation. The fans have been great up here. They've had good racing through the years. And I think in turn, the Winston Cup drivers are going to try to put on one of the best shows they've ever had. Well, the fan response has been tremendous, but there are some familiar faces here, like the one on the pole. He's been there before, but victory lane? That's been another story for this driver. Here's Glenn Jarrett. Well, thanks, Mike, and that's exactly right. Mark Martin has his second pole of the year, but an unusual point, he has not been to victory lane this year. Mark, you have had the dominant car so many times. You've led so many laps. Is today going to be the day you can turn it around? Well, I don't know. Uh, sure hope so. Uh, I couldn't be happier with the way our deal's going, the way our car's running and everything. Uh, this team is really doing a great job for me, and this might be the day, but as we saw at Michigan, you know, you can't win if it's not your turn. We hope today it's our turn. Well, you've got our uh, onboard camera, in-car camera with you. Are you going to give us some great shots? Sure hope so. Uh, this car's been great ever since we've been here, and uh, this is a really nice facility, so we're looking forward to this race. Well, good luck to you, Mark. Now, a guy that we see week after week on the Bush Grand National Tour is also here. Jeff Burton, who normally runs Bush Grand National Racing, has qualified six. A great run for him in his first Winston Cup race. Randy Pemberton standing by with him. Well, a couple of uh, unique features about you. First of all, qualified very well. Second of all, the car that you're running today is a sister car for what Mark Martin has. He drove this car at North Wilkesboro. You're sitting in it today. Good qualifying effort. What about 300 laps here? Well, we're real excited about this, this race. We're running real well. Yesterday morning, we ran super. And uh, yesterday afternoon, we picked up a bad push. So a little bit uh, hesitant about what's going to happen. But those guys on my crew, they made a lot of changes. I think we're ready to go. OK, good luck today, Jeff. Also in this crowd today, a couple of other, or at least one other Bush Grand National competitor, Joe Nemechek, will start in the 15th position. And incidentally, Mike, I think these two guys have the most experience on this racetrack. It may well be. In fact, of the five drivers in this field that ran the Bush Series last year, Randy, four of them qualified in the top 20. A driver who you last saw on national TV bring his car to a halt on pit road, a bit dazed in the Pepsi 400 last week, is with Buddy Baker. Kyle last week. 
Daytona, you look like you're in pretty bad shape. How are you doing now? And, and tell me a little bit about last week, because, I mean, you stopped in pit road, and it looked bad. Yeah, I, I'm doing okay now. It took uh, three or four days to get over it, but what happened was it was hot, and I think the heat contributed to it, but I got in that wreck with Jimmy Spencer and those guys and knocked all the inner panels out, and you know how it is when you get the carbon monoxide, your fingers start tingling, then my legs started tingling and went numb, so I told them to get somebody, but we couldn't find anybody, and when the, by the time they told me the to pit, I didn't know whether I was on pit road or on a racetrack to tell you the truth, so I just stopped, and they hauled me out, and we couldn't find anybody to get in the car, but I'm doing pretty good. Kyle, what about today? Are you 100% now? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's hard to say. I'm still a little weak, I think, still having headaches pretty bad, but, uh, you know, with enough Tylenol and uh, enough water, I think I'll be able to go. Let me tell all of you something. The Petty family is notorious for going all the way. This guy would make it. In fact, buddy Richard Petty was seen running for his helmet to go in relief of Kyle, but he was not an eligible relief driver last week. Wouldn't that have been something? Neil Long straightaways and big but flat turns on this racetrack. What are we going to see? Mike, I think anytime you come to a new track, the crews and the drivers and the engine builders can expect a little bit of problem getting a whole racetrack, getting the right power source, and just getting everything dialed in for the race. Some of the teams came up here and tested a few weeks ago. But that's out the window now. Big heat wave in this part of the country. Track's totally different. So I think the thing we're looking at, scramble all day, try to get the car dialed in during the race, and see who's good at the end. But now we're more used to four and 500 mile races on the super speedways. This one's just 300. This one is just 300, and this 300 is going to be a doozy because they can sprint race this thing. These drivers are capable of running 300 miles flat out, and they're going to have to do that. You can't wait till the end of the race. You're going to get there in a hurry. We're going to see some quick racing early in this race. And one driver we will see today is Ken Schrader, suspended by NASCAR for illegal carburetor parts during last week's qualifying. He won the appeal. Still got the fine, but Schrader and car owner Joe Hendrick are here, and Kenny will be in the race today. We'll be right back. TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Slick 50 300 is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Slick Food. <laughs> TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Slick 50 300 is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Add more life to your car. And by cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. Getting set to fire engines here at New Hampshire International Speedway. Since it's the halfway point of the 1993 season, we thought we would make that the topic of this week's Haviland Update. There's been a lot of celebrating for Dale Earnhardt in this first half of the 1993 season. 
After a narrow defeat at Daytona, Earnhardt clamped on the rear bumper of Rusty Wallace, the checkered flag at Rockingham. And after two races, the point standings look like this. Then March rolled in like a lion to Atlanta Motor Speedway, the blizzard of 93, delaying the Motorcraft 500. Finally, Morgan Shepard took the checkered flag to the delight of the Wood Brothers. And after four races, Earnhardt's lead was down to just 19 points. But then Earnhardt won Charlotte. And at Dover, it was the battle of the two Dale. Earnhardt leading Jarrett to the checkered flag. That was Dale's third win of the season, followed up by a fourth victory just last week in Daytona, as Earnhardt seeks his sixth Winston Cup. Right now, the points look like this. Earnhardt has a 251 lead on Dale Jarrett. Rusty Wallace, another 94 points behind. Then, Morgan Shepard and Ken Schrader. Sears Die Hard Batteries, now with more power when you need it most, presents the starting grid for today's Slick 50 300. 20th career pole and second of the season for Mark Martin. His Valvoline Ford on the pole. Sterling Marlin in a four. His first front row start this year. Jeff Gordon is in the second row for the fifth time this year with Kenny Schrader, who finished third at Daytona last week. Terry Labonte, fifth, best starting spot of the year. Jeff Burton won last July here in a Bush Series event. Davey Allison, winner at Richmond in March, and Ernie Irvin, who won a last lap thriller at Talladega this May. The Daytona 500 champ, Dale Jarrett, and Ricky Rudd, who won at Michigan last month. In row six, Jimmy Spencer, with a lot of Bush experience here, and Michael Waltrip. Row number seven, Jimmy Hensley, who has the Bush qualifying record here, and Morgan Shepard, who won at Atlanta on TNN. Joe Nemechek makes his first Winston Cup start ever, and Rick Wilson. In row nine, Bobby Labonte, with two second-place finishes here, and Bill Elliott. Row number 10, Kyle Petty, who won a Pocono last month with Ted Musgrave, who was fifth in that event. Then Lake Speed, the former Darlington winner and three-time Winston Cup champ, Daryl Walter. In row 12, Brett Bodine is looking for his first win since 1990, and Dale Earnhardt starts way back in 24. Worst all year for him. Kenny Wallace won a Bush race here in 91, and Rick Bass did so in 1990. Jeff Bodine, who won the Sears Point race in May, and Bobby Hillen. Then Harry Gant, who's two-time veteran here at New Hampshire, and Greg Sachs, the 85 Daytona 400 winner. Wally Dallenbach starts in row number 16, along with Hutt Strickland. Then it's Rusty Wallace, four-time race winner this year, deep in the field, and Dave Marcus makes his 727th Winston Cup start. Former Ricky of the Year, Ken Bouchard, returns to the tour. Jerry O'Neill from New York State outside. Then Dick Trickle in the Raymont car, and Derek Cope, the 90 Daytona winner. Phil Parsons, he's won at Talladega, and Jimmy Means makes his 448th career start. They're on the pace lap, and we'll be right back to the nation's newest super speedway as we bring it to you live on TNN. <coughs> Boy, my ears here are all messed up. All right, my left... <coughs> Kali Mabas here. On the left side. Okay, Dennis, Dennis Baxter, please, please raise the Q level to us as opposed to Patty, because she's much, much louder than Q, please. More program, thank you. Okay. 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 <laughs> Call them through like we always do. There's that'll work. Two more pace laps. I think you're right. Got a little bit of cloud cover today. Help Forget, look at this one. Yeah. Will that one not tighten up? Okay. Mark Martin is real nervous in his car because of that sealer that they put down. Steve Mills just told me that he was real worried about trying to lead the first lap, getting in there real hard, afraid the car will get away from him. So they're going to be kind of light footing it through there. This is one, to, two to go, two to go.
Back at Loudon, New Hampshire. Bob Beer's beautiful one-mile super speedway about to drop the green on its first Winston Cup race. He'll be riding along with Mark Martin from the pole in his Jack Roush Valvoline Ford. There he is next to Sterling Marlin. There's your dome light camera looking over Mark's shoulder straight ahead. And we've got a face cam over on the driver's side that can also see down the left side of that car and the roof cam on Mark Martin's car to show you what he says, what he sees as he looks ahead at the pace car. Jimmy Spencer in the Monarchy Muffler's Tic Tac Ford, the Bobby Allison car, former national modified champion. He'll be riding with him today. There's the onboard race cam and Jimmy Spencer's machine. And a look out the right window of Jimmy Spencer's car and off the rear bumper, looking back at Jimmy Hensley. Also leading rookie on the tour, Jeff Gordon and his DuPont Hendrick Chevrolet. We'll show you from Jeff Gordon this view as they come down for the start. Jeff Gordon grabs for the shifter, looking off the rear roof, and here they come, green flag. Mark Martin leads them into one. Last night, they put a bit of sealer down up in turn number three, the extreme heat. Martin a little tentative about flying off down there to lead left one down in turn number three, but here he comes with it. Marlin is second, Gordon is third, Schrader. And a side-by-side -side fight for fourth, you're riding with Jimmy Spencer. Just ahead, Dale Jarrett and Mike Walter. Now with Jeff Gordon in third place. Out of turn four to complete lap one. First ever Winston Cup lap at New Hampshire National or in New England. Up. Around goes the zero car of Jeff Burton. Ken Schrader with him, and he couldn't save it. Ernie Irvin got into it. And Burton goes up to the wall. A tough debut for the Phil Martossi team in Winston Cup racing. And Jeff Burton, one of the best flat track drivers in the Bush Grand National Series, ends up in the fence. Joe's really tough about that. He lost it around the four car coming by. It looked like a tangle with the four. They are coming back to the start finish line. Mike Burton is back in the race. He's back up to speed. He's off the wall and coming around now. Chevrolet Corvette pace car will pick him up down in turn Ern one. Ernie Irvin has some front end damage on his car. When he come by, and notice a lot of smoke off the right front corner of his car. We'll be running, running our TNN 800 number throughout this telecast. You can call in toll free with your questions about this event. The call is free. 800-451-7331 all throughout today's telecast. We're under caution. We'll be right back. It looked like Schrader just uh, got under him and he didn't see him come down on him. I think, I think you're right. Thank you. Okay. Dennis Patty is still quite loud to us compared to programs, at least to me. It's going to be a few laps, Patty. They're not going. Yeah, they got to sort scoring here. Listen, now let me have the infrared sheet, please. Thank you. Ooh, a lot of damage on the front of the four yeah. car. Right rear. Yeah, uh, look at right. the right front, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Darrell got a, a horrible start. Didn't he? Wasn't that him dropping back on a start? Yeah, I don't know what the deal is. He's in the pits now. Something yeah. must happen. Stranger. Mm. And beating on it. See if something was rubbing in the steering in the right front. Or when you hit somebody, like, you know, it just barely touched, but it can move a lot of things. You can't get it gear or something. There you go. Okay. I don't <laughs> suppose Burton wants to talk to us on the radio about what happened. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> One to go, Patty. back to New Hampshire International. You're watching Ernie Irvin's crew. They had a lot of repairs to make from damage from this incident. Jeff Burt 
You see his back out, damage to the left front and rear. Let's show you what happened. Back at fourth spot. Well, you see Schrader, he tried to avoid him. He got all the way under the yellow line, but Burton come down, they made a little bit of contact, and there's a lot of cars that were damaged in this thing. 21 cars got some dump. You can see them right here. They jammed up in the center park there. Yeah, they got together going down in turn one. As this came around, I said the four car takes a pretty good lick right here from Burton. The 21 car has a lot of damage to the nose area of it. The four car took the, looked like the hardest lick on the side. Here's Jeff Gordon, the in car, waving his hand, going down in the corner. And here they are, right behind them. There's where they touch. And a bit of damage to the right front of Schrader's car where the contact was initiated. It was the right front of Schrader into the left rear of Jeff Burton. Yeah, they were doing the, uh, put some toe in the car right there. You know what that looked like, guys, if they went down in the corner, with Jeff Gordon saw the first two cars slowing down fast, he put up his hand, and, and maybe the zero car put on the brakes, and of course, Schrader had nowhere to go and un under him, and then they made the contact. A little contact there as Sterling Marlin tries to lead a lap of this race. We're back under green. Five complete. Mark Martin up front, Sterling Marlin, the outside pole sitter in the Ray Vesta score, trying to chase him down. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of leads. We've got this series right on the front of the pack. The guys are going to try to have to work their way to the front in a hurry because it's just such a short race compared to what they normally run. Only 300 laps around this one-mile facility. Turns one and two right down around the bottom. Jeff Gordon in third, Terry Labonte in fourth, Davy Allison in fifth. Mark Martin had called before the race started and said he's going to be a little cautious and not worry about leading, but his car must feel really good because he is leading the race. He must feel, feel like he's doing anything he wants to do right now. He's going to lay back some. Well, they put a sealer on this track like yesterday in three and four, but it's a type that's not slick like the old bear grease they used to use in Darlington and all, and it sets up in less than 30 minutes. I think that sealer was more of a safety feature. This is a great little racetrack. And they just never had to deal with this type of heat before. First time they've ever had it up here, put it on there just as a safety feature. Well, record high temperatures here this week in the 90s up till today. Today it'll be in the higher 80s, but with lower humidity than we've seen. Riding with the hottest rookie on the tour, Jeff Gordon of the DuPont Chevrolet. Takes that's, little bites out of that wheel down in turn one, buddy. Yeah, that's a great shot there. He was talking to his crew chief just then down the straightaway. You see his thumb go over and get on the microphone. Yeah, we talked this track. They say it's 12 degree turns in the corners, but look, look how flat. See the car slip right there as he went in the corner. It looks flat from inside the car. That 12 degrees goes away in a hurry. You come in at 130, 40 miles an hour. Looking from Gordon back to Terry Labonte who had his best qualifying start of the year. Dale Earnhardt, who had his worst qualifying run of the year here, coming up, and caution up, out of turn straight four. Away. Mike Waltrip, Kenny Schrader, looks like Greg Sachs up against the wall. Is that? No, that's Bill Parsons, excuse me. And there's one other car involved. I think that's Jerry O'Neill, the black car. That coming out of turn number four at lap 10. Ken Schrader already one lap down. As a result of the first incident of the day, it's wrapped up in another one. Or a big pack of cars trying to race back to the caution. Of course, that accident right out of turn four. You see the tire marks left by the Mannheim Auctions car of Phil Parsons up there. This is our infrared camera, courtesy of Cincinnati Electronics Corporation. And you see on the right side that bar scale from dark blue to bright red. That shows you the relative heat in the racetrack. We'll look at this a few times during the day. And if you look down in the lower right corner of the screen, you'll see the temperature of the track is in the green range thus far, which is a little more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit and expect it to go much hotter. We'll have some other interesting pictures from this camera as we go throughout the day. That uh, The white end of the scale way at the top is about 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's match up the infrared shot with the cars coming through. Down in the below 100 degrees of the scale, except for the tires. You can see there and the heat from the exhaust. The camera in the infrared part of the color spectrum, way above the red that you see, measures heat production, not light reflection. 
Yeah, Do not adjust your set. No, that red is just strictly exhaust you see coming out of these cars. And when, when they're under full power, that thing is all the way outside the car, like 10 foot. A lot of cars coming in the pits. And Ken Schrader has climbed from his car and heads back to the garage area. We're under caution for the second time today at the nation's newest super speedway in New Hampshire. That's good. Okay, that's good because he got hammered on the last one. He had to jump on the brakes for Ernie. Kenny might say better off suspended. Okay. Do we have, thank Do we you. have that rig? Okay, gotcha. I'm sorry. Uh, that's much better, Dennis. Thank you. Guys, can you hear Patty okay still? Yeah, good. The best is me. Okay. Well, that week. Okay. <laughs> Who else was in it? Phil, the 25, uh, the black car, which is Jerry O'Neill. Jerry O'Neill is the black car in that. Back to New Hampshire International Speedway. You're riding along with Mark Mart about where the uh, outside rear view mirror would be on your passenger car at the door post. Mike Waltrip was part of that incident with Phil Parsons, Jerry O'Neill, Ken Schrader. Let's show you what happened up in turn four. Okay, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's adjust our sets again. I think that's the fire truck parked there in turn number four. <laughs> now let's show you what happened. There's Jerry O'Neill coming off the wall with Mike Walter coming behind him in a yellow car. Looked like Schrader had got together with something right off the corner up there. That's the aftermath of that one. And it parks four cars, at least momentarily. That was Ken Bouchard slipping through in the Burger King car. Katie Haas is down here working with his crew this week. She's working on the 30 cars. She better get busy. <laughs> That's Ken Schrader's car being hauled to the garage area. He has walked back there. Everybody okay. You know Ken Squire, the race announcer? Meet Ken Squire, the track promoter. A little bit of racing up here in northern New England. How much do they care about stock car racing up here in New England? Well, this is a typical Thursday night at a track that's very dear to my heart, Thunder Road in Barrie, Vermont. A couple of years ago, Joey LeCare Jr. won the Thunder Road Track Championship. That winter, he was killed in a snowmobile accident. LeCare's hometown, Barry, is called the granite capital of the world. Local stone cutters, Joey's friends and neighbors, fans, they wanted to remember him as a champion. And this is what they created in stone. It took five months to carve a six-ton half scale of number 61, complete in detail to the A-frame, the lug nuts, even his signature. This is how much they care about their stock car champions up here in New England. Well, as Ken will be the first to tell, tell you, it's the fans that make New England racing special and how devoted they are to their sport, just as they are down south or any other part of the country where stock car racing has an avid following. Phil Parsons' car is being hauled back to the garage area as well as Ken Schrader's. You see a bit of speedy dry down here in turn number one and off into turn number two. That's the fire truck leading the parade ahead of the Corvette safety car. From our 800 number, uh, who is Jeff Burton driving for today? That call from Pennsylvania. It's Phil Martossi, the same fellow who owns his Bush Series car. The TIC Financial Ford is the car. It's a, a rental from the Jack Rouse shops. The Jeff rent Gordon. just went up. Yeah, I think the rent went up after that little bout with the wall. Well, to bring you up to date on what's happened to Ernie Irvin, the damage that he suffered in that first crash seems to be just sheet metal. They, th they tell me the toe is okay. There doesn't seem to be any steering component damage. They have made a repeated stops under these cautions to try to pull the fenders off the tires. Other than that, he's okay. They were glad to see the caution flag. Darrell Walter, if you mentioned, Mike got off to a poor start. They had a plug wire off at the beginning of the race, and now they also have gearbox problems. 
but they think that they have his problems corrected too. So these early cautions gave these guys a chance to uh, do that repair work, get caught up without losing too much time. Engine builder Lou LaRosa there working under the hood along with the rest of that crew. And since we're under caution, we'll take a pause from New Hampshire International and be right back live on TNN. We can do all the commercials and go nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I mean. That's good. That wasn't me, Patty. <laughs> I want to put one on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm holding you to it. Mike, she said she hadn't done Ford telemetry yet. No, we haven't. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Thanks. Let me get his name so we can... Uh... Jimmy's in eighth spot now. Okay. You don't have another drop here. Just, just for Q. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. This guy's going to be cutting on stuff again. Who's it? <clears throat> oh, God. He got my foot. One to go, folks. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks. Just flip this up so it's... Okay, even if we've got that restart, well, it looks like we won't have it. If we don't have One to go. All right, we'll do it next time. TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Slick 50 300 is brought to you by Napa, because there are no unimportant Park. Welcome back to TNN's live exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300. John from Mississippi called in. He wanted to see a restart from the in-car camera, so John will take you for a ride with Jimmy Spencer as he comes up through the gears. Jimmy used to drive for Buddy Baker, so let's let him call this. Okay. He's in uh, third gear. There's third gear. He was in second. He looked to the outside. Nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> he better not try that right now. He got a little oil dry to work with now. He's trying under Ricky Rudd. Whoop. Ooh, that's why they call him Mr. Excitement. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> He'll do it, won't he? That's an eighth place. For Spencer running right behind Ricky Rudd and just ahead of Jimmy Henson. Up in the front of the pack. Mark Martin, and now you're back with Spencer once again. Mark Martin leading Sterling Marlin by just a car length. Jeff Gordon in third. And Terry Labonte having a great run in fourth. Here comes Sterling. Okay, that was a heads-up move there. It's a little early to go in there two abreast right now. They'll fight it out with 10 laps to go. But right now, I think he's just content to run in second place. See Jeff Gordon fighting that car just a little bit there. They get a little loose coming up out of the corner here. Is he fighting it or feeling it? Feeling it. That's what you call walking the tight wire there. That's very close to going all the way around with that steering wheel when you see him working like that. I tell you, they put enough oil dry and stuff down. We've had these cautions early. If there's just a little bit of stuff, you can see it on the track. It blows around, and it takes a few laps to clear it off. And you just have to be real cautious working that wheel right now. Mark Martin back to second. We've had 16 Winston Cup races this year. He has led 11 of them. You can see the onboard board telemetry and the RPM at the end of the straightaway comes up to, hold your breath, 8,400 RPM. And he just backed the pace down. You know, when he was leading the race, he's kind of let the eight car go on. He's going to pace it. He said earlier he didn't want to run the car that hard to start of the race. 8,400 back there down. It's pretty stout, everybody. You bet your life it is. Look at that. 153 mile an hour down the front straightaway into a flat corner, folks. Those things better to stick to that racetrack and you're out of here. When you come to a flat track you saw in the middle of the corner, the RPM dropped to 5,300. So you're asking the motor to work from 53 up to 84, 8,500. So it really labors that engine on his flat tracks. That's a big swing. It's no wonder they call this a big Martin. That's right. You know, we go to a place like Daytona, Talladega. 
and you'll drop 50 RPM, or maybe a 100 RPM. Place like this, when you drop it that much, it really ruins the motor to a big cycle of using it. Morgan Shepard dropping back a spot. Shepard is involved in that first incident of the day. He's still on the lead lap and loses sixth place to Rudd. He's got a good bit of damage on the right front of the 21 car. There you go. You can see it. He got in the back of some of those cars in that first wreck. That's Shepard on the left of your screen, Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy Hensley, there's a very up-close view of Jimmy Hensley from the bumper cam on Spencer's car. That goes from have you driven a Ford lately to have you rode on a Ford lately. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe have you felt one lately? That was a little touchy. It was uptight. We about lost him in car camera yesterday. Tom Baldwin took us for quite a ride in the modified race, including into the wall when his engine let go on the very last lap. The camera survived. So did Tom and the race car. These drivers have to maintain that distance here. What he wants to do is get right up under him. If he can make that car slip a little bit, then he just has a foot to drive up and get up beside him. You just got to keep that car there, pestering him all the time, hoping they slip and you stick your foot in the door. For Don from Washington, no, no restrictor plates here at New Hampshire International as we watch this battle for fifth place. Davey Allison trying Terry Labonte. Not this time. Labonte in the Kellogg's car acknowledged as one of the best road racers in NASCAR. And this track is so flat, Neil, same type of, of smooth driving style might serve him well here. That along with the fact we were watching telemetry a while ago, you could see him using a brake a lot. Some tracks you go to, you just barely touch the brake, but it requires a good bit of braking getting in this corner. That road racing uh, pays off on that also. Jimmy Spencer underneath Morgan Shepard goes on by. There's a little bit better shot at that damage we were talking about before. <laughs> Really ugly. roll back right there. That is bucket ugly, the front of that car. <laughs> Put some tape over that. Come on. I think Morgan told him up a little bit, but he really got a lot of damage on the nose that car. It's about as aerodynamic as the dirt. Mark Martin's getting back up on the back bumper of Sterling Marlin. He let him go a while ago. He might have decided, hey, the pace is not as quick as I want to run it. And he's going to get up there and put the heat back on the eight car again, trying to take that lead back, it looks like. See, those two cars are trying to check out. Either he's putting the heat on or he's trying to hook up with him to go and go because they have distanced the third place car of Jeff Gordon by a good bit. Oh, here comes Mark. He's about half under that white line, buddy. You know, we seen in the Bush Grand National race yesterday, one car would get, get out in the lead and maybe use his tires a little too much and they'd fall back and the second place car would catch up and then they would get down again. So what they're doing right now is just feeling each other out. Just update you back in the pack. Earnhardt started 24th. He's now up to 13th. Rusty Wallace started back in 33rd position. He's moved to 24th. Derek Cope, who started back in 38th, he's climbed the ladder up to 22nd spot. Here at the front of the field, Sterling Marlin looking for his first ever Winston Cup victory. He has one top five finish this season. Best finish ever, second, eight times in the Daytona 400. Here we go. Mark Martin has followed him and followed him. He said, hey, i got to go again. He's up under him. He's got that inside line, and that should give him the lead as they go through three and four. Long straightaway, and Marlin drops in as they hit turn number three. Yesterday, in the Bush North race and in the modified race, we saw a lot of side-by-side -side racing for the lead. Not so much here yet. Most of the drivers seem to at least content when they get down to the corner to give the corner to the car on the inside and then drop in. I don't think we'll see that all day. No, let it go away after a while. Right now, they're willing to give you a little bit more, but later on, they're going to get pretty darn greedy before the day's over. You're going to have to work for that territory. The Dales are getting greedy right here. Jarrett and Earnhardt inside of Rick Wilson on the STP Pontiac. Here comes the interstate Chevrolet of Jarrett. That green and black machine. Earnhardt head hunting on the outside. I think as the course of this race goes on, you'll see that out, outside lane get to be a little bit more workable. They're just protecting that inside line a lot more now. They'll have to move around that outside lane to make some passes. This track is plenty wide for two wide and even, maybe a little three wide race. Not plenty wide, but also flat. Bobby Labonte moving up. He was one of those four Bush regulars from last year qualified here in the top 20. Bill Davis Maxwell House car running just behind Earnhardt. I think that's one of the keys to the development in the Bush series. They started running tracks, even though this is a new track, they started running tracks the Winston Cup cars run. When they move up into this division, they're not out in left field in the track location. So it was even an asset to be coming out of the Bush running here before. 
Neil, you're exactly right. The problem they had yesterday, they couldn't find anybody to hold the rookie meeting. Most all the rookies, the rookie of the year candidates, have already won on this racetrack, and a lot of the Winston Cup guys have never even seen it. Well, we, we had two rookies on the pole, Mark Martin and Sterling Marley, that never ran here before. Right. Earnhardt goes under Rick Wilson. Bobby Labonte tries to follow him through, but the door slams on his board. Now it's Jarrett underneath Morgan Shepard. Well, Dale Jarrett's starting to move up a little bit. Looks like that damage that Morgan has to his car might be affecting him a little bit. He's been good at practice and everything. The Cinco car, he's falling back just a little bit now. Ninth place there, Shepard. Just ahead of them, Jimmy Hensley. What happened to Earnhardt qualifying? 24. I was walking through the garage talking to him, and he said, hey, I just messed up. He said, I ran down in the corner. He said, I thought I had a shot to set on the pole, and he ran in so hard, he just slid out, and it just killed him. Trying it on Morgan Shepard. Meanwhile, Bobby Labonte made an empty pass on Rick Wilson. Things got a little close down there, buddy, with everybody trying to stay on that bottom groove. Well, Earnhardt come off the corner underneath the 21 car and got a little bit sideways, and uh, he just feathered it out of there and got the preferred line going in. Next I think Morgan's in a lot of trouble as far as their dynamics. This car's only 3,500 pounds before the race. Frank from Nevada called in. Wondered if they lose a fender, what would happen if they didn't make weight at the end of the race and they had a bunch of body work missing, as some of these guys do. The only thing you have to fulfill on the weight after the race, if you do not have damage, I'll let you refill it with fuel and water and weigh it. But if you have damage, then just take that consideration. First three cars, and Gordon has come back to the two Fords where well, the race is coming to him. Look how much smoother his hand is in the corner. Now. He's got the car, he's got his rhythm in. He's going to make somebody work today. Starting to reel on in there. I'm not so sure before they're working that wheel that they might have been chattering that front end just a little bit. Or either rear on him, but he's got it real smooth as Buddy says now. And Davey Allison moved right up on the front four now. So it's, I mean, he's really trucking. Jeff Gordon on the one mile ovals this season. He was 34th at Rockingham. The second Winston Cup race, or third career Winston Cup race, 18 minutes down. Riding with Martin there. That windowsill cam as he leads. They have a good bit of breeze in the car here. They do, and if you notice on that pillow there beside his left, on the left side there, that's where his fresh air comes in, and you see the tube running up into his helmet there. That's fresh air from the outside, and that really helps a lot. Rick Wilson had to use a little bump and run to get past Morgan Shepard there. Open the door for Kyle Petty. Mellow Yellow Pontiac and Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Ford moving up. You know, one thing might be a problem here is they use a lot of braking at this racetrack. And it looks like a lot of the brake duct and stuff on the right front of that car is gone. And it could heat up that right front brake and really make the car handle. Change the characteristics, that's a great deal. <laughs> Kyle Petty moves up a spot on Shepard. That'll move Kyle up in the 13th position. That car is working extremely well, and I think he, his driving style is really going to help him here. He does not run a car too hard off in the corner. I think he's going to save there. And he makes the straightaway really long because he gets back in the throttle early in the corner. So I think Kyle will be moving up right on up to the front. So says Professor Baker of the Buck Baker Driving School at Rockingham, where Kyle Petty. You, you teach that move to your students down there? Yeah, why, why use the straightaway too far and then have to cut it sideways getting in the corner? <laughs> if I'd have known that, I'd have won 400 races, I guess. <laughs> There's Joe Nemechek. He's the uh, first, first one of the Winston Cup car, uh, races he's ran. That car is not like one lease. That car is out of their shop. Whoa, we got a pass for the lead here. Sterling Marlin back to the front. And Davey Allison just goes by Gordon, Gordon John Cox. Boy, I'm in there, aren't I? We're, <laughs> that just uh, went back about 50 years, folks. We're not, we're not going out Saturday nights before the race anymore, Baker. <laughs> Jeff Gordon in fourth spot and three Fords in front of the first Chevrolet. Here comes Davey Allison. And here's Dale Jarrett moving under Jimmy Hensley in the Purolator Ford and Earnhardt. This looks like Dover. Oops, Chapter 2. The Dale and Dale show right here. Bernhardt's car really slid a bit. Here comes Labonte. Labonte down to the inside. Now what? Ooh, 
Brock Hensley was coming down for that outside lane. I didn't know if you saw the 22 car entering that corner. Chopped right across the front of him. They missed each other. You know, I give Bobby Labonte high marks there because usually you follow a Dale Earnhardt, you don't expect somebody like that to make a mistake you can capitalize on. When Earnhardt started to slide up, Labonte jumped right underneath him. You know the thing, though. They race each week, you know, in the Bush Grand National team. So, I mean, they're used to racing each other, and they know each other pretty well. run as long the races as a lot of the Winston Cup guys. These Bush guys are ready for when they drop that leg to try to get to the front in a hurry. That 22 car has been working really good on all weekend. One of the best friends Bobby Labonte's had this year. In fact, all of the Bush Series drivers with flat track recent experience and big heavy car doing pretty well. Labonte best finish eighth this year at Charlotte Motor Speedway. The thing to talk about is three fours right up there in the front of the race and you come to a track where it's real torquey like this pull them down low rpm like a couple of low rpm up to high and it seems like the ford really worked good on those kind of tracks that's it neil we saw mark martin's telemetry go from 5300 in the middle of the corner to 8400 at the end of the straightaway that's quite a swing you see jimmy hamilton around the track right here i think he's won here if i'm not mistaken and and uh he said this morning he really liked the race track. It took his driving style. Well, when you say Martinsville, you think of Jimmy Hensley. He flies at that place. He just got a little bit bigger Martinsville right here. He's done a good job. Back up front, it's Sterling Marlin. Trying to score his first Winston Cup win. You see how far in front he is. The second place car of Mark Martin. 42 laps. We'll be right back. Gordon Johncock. Gordon Johncock, <laughs> where have you been for 20 years? You've been watching a Fastmaster. Okay. Okay. Somebody better get okay. on, on the 28 car when we come back. Yeah, he'll be there. He'll, uh, he'll be there. This is a big Phoenix, or a little Phoenix. Well, same same Phoenix, without a back straightaway corner. We're also going to have a wreck here in just a few seconds. Uh, Patty. Rusty Wallace has moved from 31st to 16th and looks like he's really on the go here. Good. Good. Whoa, look at that. And look at this. <laughs> all Buddy did all yesterday. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. Gotcha. You need a new roll, don't you? you need a new roll of paper? Or is that, uh, no, I guess not. I've laid the biggest egg of the year. Gordon John Cox. Yeah, but, but Gordon is <laughs> yeah. really going to appreciate it. Gordon, if you're watching on satellite, we haven't forgotten you, okay? Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the Slick 5300 at the New Hampshire International Raceway or Speedway. Back here in the garage area, the crew works on Kenny Schrader's car. I tried to get an interview with him. He's had a rough weekend. He said he wanted to go in the trailer and cool off. Here's the damage on Schrader's car. Upper and lower control arms on the light on the left-hand side of the car. Uh, new brake rotor. Uh, they have to do a tons of tons of things like uh, new brake lines as well as an oil cooler has to go in. So uh, Schrader's car suffered a tremendous amount of damage. They have to do some work on the sheet metal as well in the left-hand corner of the car. Crew tells me they're looking at about 30 minutes to get back out on the track, but of course they're going to do it because of those Winston Cup points. 30 minutes will put us at about lap 120, Randy. The way uh, at the pace we're going. 
Here's a view from high above New Hampshire International, our Ray Bestus brake cam, provided by Ray Bestus, the best in brakes. And you see just how long those turns are to get around the packed house here. There have been parking cars as much as three miles away and busing people in to get them into this speedway. But the state of New Hampshire has really worked with the track folks for traffic control. I've never heard of this at a Winston Cup race. They're going to take Interstate 93 going south. And of the three northbound lanes, two of them are going to be southbound. Five lanes south and only one lane north on the interstate after this race to try to get all these folks home as easily as possible. The cooperation from the whole state of New Hampshire has been terrific. Bill Elliott, the Budweiser Ford of Junior Johnson underneath. Brett Bodine. This battle back in 18th position, still on the lead lap, as are 34 of our 40 starters. You know, as Neil said, he thought the groove on. Looks like Bell may have a little bit of uh, tire heat right now. He's dropped him back just a little bit, but the outside groove is starting to work. You notice these cars are starting to pass on the outside here. Bell's extremely loose. Joe Nemechek in the Dentine Chevrolet. First Winston Cup start. Don't be surprised if you see him on the senior circuit next year. As I was saying earlier, they built that car at their shop. It runs the same shop the Bush car does, and they want to do some stuff on their own with their Winston Cup cars. And if he moves up, he might just see his brother John take over the Bush ride, running some all pro type racing. And we see Ernie Irvin with the yellow car, the four car back there, had all that damage at the first of the race. And usually, if, if there's not some problem, his car comes right to the front. So I can't help but think that Brett did something to the car that's not as good as it Rusty Wallace got out voting on Lake Winnipesaukee yesterday. <laughs> had some fun. Boy, when they named these lakes around here, they had to be in a hurry. Rusty Wallace on the move. He's up to 16th, start, 16th position right now. Wallace started deep in the field, 33rd. You know, I talked to him last night a little bit, and he told me the reason he qualified terrible was he just made him an error himself. The car was really good. And you can see it's working pretty well right now. He's on the bottom of the racetrack, trying to move up. Now, he came back yesterday and was the fastest second-round qualifier. Also hugging the bottom. Jimmy Means there has made a pit stop in the Hurley Limo Ford. Under green. Come back out. 53 laps complete. Three Fords, two Chevrolets in the top five. Dale Jarrett, just ahead of Ricky Rudd. He just passed him the last lap. That put him up in fifth place. Jarrett's really been coming through the field. And if you'll stop and think, when they had that wreck right in the first, he almost T-boned the guy and made a good move and moved right up into fifth place. This car's working well. Both these two cars, Neil, Jarrett and the Tide Chevrolet of Ricky Rudd. Jarrett snaked his way through the field. Rudd had to get hard on the brakes. But then on the next caution flag, Rudd went from 11th to 7th position, racing back to the flag to get back to the front. Yeah, that's where it goes. One caution, it cost him. The next one, he took advantage of. So it's yeah. pretty well evened out for him. You know, the Hendrix cars are running exceptionally well. We're looking at the 18 car. That has an engine from Hendrix in it. Ricky Rudd's running good. You've got Gordon up front. Their stuff is really working. Right behind Jarrett, there's Dave Marcus down on the inside. The veteran among all drivers in career Winston Cup starts that are active. His car, sponsored by ATL Rentals, that's a New England company. They rent storage trailers. The first time they've ever been able to entertain their customers at a Winston Cup race anywhere near home. Well, I tell you, it's not only the fan sports, it's just nice to see the companies, the city, we had the governor here a while ago. I'm telling you, these people are behind this type of racing. They mark of the independence in Winston Cup racing. Always a threat. I wonder if Marcus is charging him running today. Reverse order on this deal. There's <laughs> Bobby Labonte up to move around him. The Maxwell House car. Up at second place. Mark Martin now has a mirror full of Davey Allison in the Texaco Haviland Ford. And we would show you the, the leader of Sterling Marlin, but he just checked out from these two guys. He's about three seconds up there. If he wants TV time, he's got to slow up a little bit. <laughs> and a bunch of lap cars in between them. Mark is good at working his car as good as his car wants to go. He's flying. He checks out. And right now, the thing's not just like he wants it, but he's using it. Now, maybe get up here, try to pass him. Mark, pull out a little bit. If you work on him, you pull out a little bit. These two cars are pretty even back in second, third place. I mean, he's working that wheel pretty much. Yeah, I think right now he's got a little bit of a, uh, let's see, we'll watch his hands, I can tell he's pushing just a little bit at this point. 
that's on the back of Jimmy Spencer's car. Close encounter of the number three car. <laughs> yeah, they just got a while ago on the radio. We heard our guys who picked up some Bernhardt's car has got a tremendous amount of push in it. A lot of these cars, some of them are pushed, some are loose. They're looking for that car first pit stop they can make to make some adjustments to these cars. And several guys up front need some work. We've got cautions at lap two and lap ten, but none of the leaders have pitted. I'll explain that little deal about where his hands were, why I knew it was pushing. You see the hands on the far left side pulling down, that means the car will turn. The on the right side is in trouble to be pushing. Spencer and Erdogan are getting real high turn four. Got to go around the lap car. Marcus, he puts him way out in that outside lane. Find places at stake here. A couple of cars off the pace, missing the handle. Darrell Waltrip's going to lap down. Smoke recorded on the Jimmy Means car. Still 30 cars on the lead lap. Earnhardt's getting off the corner a lot better than Spencer, but as you notice, the car itself is fishtailing off the corner on Earnhardt. They're going to have to make an uh, adjustment when he comes in on the pit stop. 60 laps here of 300 at New Hampshire International Speedway. Somewhere between lap 90 and 100, we'll look for green flag gas stops. That's another thing, Mike. These guys really don't know how long they can go. Here we are, the first time they've ever run a green stop at this racetrack. So they're going to have to be a little cautious this first run, how far they can take these race cars. That was a familiar sight to me, seeing that three car come right up on your trunk like that. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't feel it like normal. Yeah. <laughs> Four wins for Earnhardt, eight top five finishes. He is the point leader. By about 250 over Dale Jarrett. Bounce. They run a real soft suspension on this racetrack. Because of the flat corners, you can just see the front end bounce and then go through the corner. Yeah, you know, we talked about the same thing similar to Martinsville. They run just about a spring like you would at Martinsville. Even though it's a mile racetrack, you slow down in the corner and they run pretty soft chassis up under these cars. We're not going to try the outside. Ooh, he is out there. Yeah, if he's got a pushy condition and he gets outside, it's going to get out there further. He's going to try Spencer on the outside. You know what will happen a lot of times when you have a push condition, you'll run to the center corner and you'll have the wheels cut to the left and get back in the car and close the back end and I'll make it loose off the corner. So it makes it a tough thing to handle, you know, to stay into it all day. But he made the pass on Jimmy Spencer. That'll move Earnhardt up to ninth place. You see Spencer right to the side of Spencer. That was a little electric fan. A little cool there on him. We said earlier they had a tremendous amount of heat. Look right to the right, that little white thing. Go to the roll bar, that's an electric thing, a little blower, and just going cool air on these drivers. I'm telling you, it's fine out there. Now, this is one of the 10 days of summer in New Hampshire. It starts the 4th of July, and don't worry, it'll be winter here in another three weeks. <laughs> yeah, but how do we get all 10 days and two here? It's been cooking at this point. Scheduling. Okay. Sterling Marlin leads this race at 63 laps. Mark Martin is in second, Davey Allison third, all in fourth. Jim Gordon Chevrolet is fourth. Fifth is Dale Jarrett, sixth is Ricky Rudd, seventh. Bobby Labonte, eighth is Terry Labonte, ninth is Earnhardt, and tenth is Jimmy Spencer, if you're watching right now. You can tell we came up north because they got snowplow sponsors on a lot of these cars and everything. And hard to, <laughs> nothing we can do with them down south. 64 laps complete, Sterling Marlin out front. We'll be right back to New Hampshire. Yeah, I did. I believe. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> uh, we might do something with the Labonte brothers if they get close together. Huh. You watch that 28 car. He is steady catching the 8 car. Now. Yeah. Davey's always good on flat track. I guess he's, he learned it in Birmingham. It's yeah, just play. like this, you know? Right. You've been tough here, man.
Sterling Marlin, son of Cuckoo Marlin, who himself won a Daytona 500 qualifying race, but never a Winston Cup event. This is Sterling's 264th career start. The most any driver who has won a cup race started before he got to victory lane. Dave Marcus, 225 starts before he won at Martinsville in 1975. I got a feeling when Sterling Marlin wins his first race, he's got to win six or eight in a row. I, it's just something, you know, once you do it, you get the confidence, and then you can go and do it again. Bill Elliott did it. He finished second eight times before he won his first race, and then look where, where he went. We had a pass for second place. Davey Allison took it away from Mark Martin while we were in commercial. Let's show it to you from our Ray Bestus Brakes helicopter-mounted camera. Took that inside lane that we've been talking about that's so critical. Get down in the corner, then beat him right up off the corner. And now that he's passed him, but he's starting to reel that leader in. You know, Neil, we were talking earlier today about David. A flat track like Phoenix here, he just excels. For some reason, I guess learning at Birmingham, you know, and running weekly down there, he's got a knack of saving his tires and getting back on the throttle really smooth, and he flies on the flat track. Yeah, you know, Richmond, Virginia, a good example. And Birmingham is flat as a pancake, and that's where he did a lot of racing before he moved into this. Old sitter Mark Martin looking for his first win of the season. Here's Rusty Wallace moving up on Jimmy Hensley. This is for 11th place. He's up in turn one. He's just been clicking away at him. He started way back in the rear. And Rusty's really coming on up now. Driving past Ken Bouchard from nearby Fitchburg, Mass. First start in a couple of years. Ken running back on the circuit. His older brother, Ron, another former rookie of the year, is here today. Rusty's trying to get back on track. You know, the first of the season, this team right here, the two car, was almost unbeatable. They stumped their toe a couple of times, had some problems, got in some big wrecks. And Rusty tells you, we got to get back in stride. I'm telling you, they're working on it. And they're going to be you know, forced to team with, contend with before the season's over again. Stumped their toe and tail over tea kettle a couple of times. I tell you, they were doing an extremely amount of, I mean, a lot of work. A lot of work making a great hit for him. And that's one thing. When they do stop on the green, he's going to pick up a lot of stops there. Trying Jimmy Spencer right here. Or against Pontiac. Straight away. And moving up on Terry Labonte. Here's a look back. Here's your Napa Field standing update brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. Boys, we were looking out of the back of Spencer's car as the they made, uh, Rusty made the pass. Uh, Spencer's car was way out in that gray area. He got really wide when Rusty got under it. Yeah, he's thinking pit stop right now. You can believe that. Yeah, one thing that, that happens at this racetrack from the races that we've seen here is when a, these cars, of course, will abrade a bit of rubber off the tires. It doesn't go very far. Some tracks it'll go way up to the way up to the wall and set up there like a Dover, some of the places we've been. Here in New Hampshire, you can get just the least little bit out of the groove, and uh, there'll be all kinds of you know little rubber debris up there. Well, Mike, that's exactly right. While you're talking about this, the leader, I was noticing this. Uh, some of these lap cars have really held him. Look at Davey behind him now. He's been held up about two laps in a row with a couple of these cars, and uh, uh, Davey Allison really wound him in here last just the last two laps. Jeff Burton trying to stay on the lead lap, but Marlin will get under him. Here's Davey Allison, the second-place car, a winner at Richmond and a runner-up at Martinsville this year. Third at Dover, last time we were on a mile. Now the key is, since the eight car got under him, can Davey get up and take advantage of that inside line also for, before he gets trapped behind these, these lap cars? Well, guys, they're all getting ready to make pit stops down here. I'm in Mark Martin's pit right now. They're getting ready. Kyle Petty, the eight car. Most of them are figuring around lap 75. But the one exception to that is car number 11 of Bill Elliott. He hasn't been in the top 15 all day. Hasn't been a factor up front. But Junior Justin told me they could run 95 laps. That's 20 laps longer than the other teams are figuring. We hear Jimmy Spencer is in now. Also, keep an eye out on Davey Allison when he pits. There's a, there's a lot of noise coming from his car. Looks like it's misfiring in the corner. Could just be an exhaust leak, but we see some flames coming out of the exhaust pipe when he enters turn one. Working on Spencer's car. Now he will likely lose a lap pitting under green here. I can tell you, Davey Allison's car is misfiring. It's misfiring in the right direction because he's flying right up on the back of Sterling Marlin. What it might be is there's a pinhole in the intake there and you're shooting cold air in on the exhaust and it does fire out like that. Davey drops under Wally Dollaback and he's still up in the car. Dollaback going to lap down. Jeff Bodine is on pit road, so is Joe Nemechek and Kenny Wallace. 
few caution flags early. We've been green all the rest of the way, so pit stops under the green. Here's Mark Martin in that same traffic that the two lead cars had to work around. Slows you down to have to take that outside lane around these guys. Dollar back will pit. So Jeff Burton goes on past him, and he's now dropped one lap. That's when it's nice, Mike. You know, you got that six car out there wondering how far I can go, and his team car just pitted. They can get a good fuel mileage read with him. Use it as an advantage whenever that six car decides to pit. Jimmy Spencer's going to get a black flag stop and go penalty too fast down pit road. Oh, man. That's a bad thing to hear. No, I'll rephrase it. That's a bad penalty anywhere, anywhere. But especially on a flat track. You can't make up the lap like you can on the, on the bank track. Sterling Marlin up front, just ahead there of Hutt Strickland in the McDonald's Ford. Greg Sachs making a pit stop. The country time limit, a car for Bristol 9 is in, Wally Dunn back as well. It looks like when he broke that traffic, the eight cars they were get back away just a little bit. Sterling's team has really been coming around the last month. In all these races, the last three or four races, they've really worked their way up in contention right in the front of the field in all of them. He had a good run at... Uh, but Daytona had a really stout run up at Michigan. You know, it's good to see the Stravolas come back and get a race car that's running out there. So they had Bobby Allison, they had a great race team, and then it kind of fell apart, and now they're back up in the front where they belong. We see him coming out against We saw Spencer go in to take that penalty that we're going to give him. These lead guys here, it's going to be critical when they come in. We're looking at lap 80 now. They said 75. That's being real, real cautious. I'm sure we're at a different facility, and they don't know that mileage yet, but uh, some of them are going to stretch it. There's Rusty Wallace in. Four tire changes on almost all of these cars. This should be some of the quickest pit action you see all day. This team is tough. I'll tell you guys, talking about that pit road speed, it was just a few laps ago to Buddy Parrott. Told Rusty, watch your speed. They had a little discussion of what they're going to do. Two tires, four tires. They took out four, made absolutely no adjustments. Prior to him coming in, he was clipping off the leader's speed. So Rusty was one of the quickest cars on the track. So they're looking pretty good. 17.8 seconds, Randy, for four tires. Not only really quick on the track, but that's steamy in the pits, isn't yep. it, buddy? That was real fast. But, you know, he qualified bad, and he had to get a pit stop way up at the front part of the As far as I'm concerned, that's a big disadvantage to have a pit way up near the the Ray Bestis breaks four. Bobby Allison, or rather of uh, the Samoa Brothers team. And that'll be Sterling Marlin and Mark Martin idling down pit road with the mandated speed limit. Kyle Petty is in. Green flag stop for the Stavola Brothers crew. Here, this will give us an idea. We just saw Rusty Wallace in four, his four tire stop in 16 something seconds, 17. I'm excuse me. We'll see what this stop will be for four tires. Eastone White pit clock is in, upper right of your screen. The girl in the chair there, she's taking now all the laps, making sure how many laps to go. And it's real important when they start getting fuel mileage from here on. Boy, he had to back out of there, buddy. After he got the tires changed, he lost some time, but he still had to back up also to get out of there. Lost four seconds compared to Rusty Wallace on the pit stop of Sterling Marlin. Absolutely no adjustments that I saw. Plus, he's right here trying to take his car. He's out of the way. A great pit stop for the Allison team also. Dale Earnhardt is in. Ernie Irvin, Bill Elliott making pit stops under the green. See Danny Meyer just throw that gas can across the wall. Once it's empty. He could throw that car across the wall if he wanted to. Well, they just had, we had a call. The 24 car wanted to come into the pits. He slowed down to come in and he got blocked out by another car. So it really cost him. Now he's going to come in this lap. Uh oh. Yeah, we've got to look at the left side. Yep. Something's hung up in it. It's either hung in gear. That's costly for Earnhardt. 36 seconds. Earnhardt has stopped in the pit. Here is Jeff Gordon here riding with him as he comes to pit road, watching that tack very carefully so he doesn't exceed the speed limit. That's an eternity going down through there that slow. Look at Jeff Gordon. I, you know, he just has to be going, uh, if I could just go a little faster. Well, he's reading that tachometer coming in, obeying that speed limit. Left side lug nuts being loosened up as the right side tire change is completed. He'll come around, pop the left side in the air, yank those tires off and put on two more. Everham and all that crew there have been doing a super job. They've been flying on the pit stop several times in Daytona. They come in six, go out in first. 
good effort, 20.7 seconds. I tell you what was a bad thing for us to do, was see Rusty Wallace first and engage everybody else. <laughs> Their team is so quick, it makes everybody else look slow. Randy? Well, Dale Jarrett is in, second the points, was leading on the racetrack when he came in. Left side tires are off, right side's already been changed. I have not seen one chassis adjustment. One car down on the way, this trick through is getting much, much better as well. Isn't that kind of odd that we have not seen chassis adjustments? Just tire changes. I'll tell you, I think that's what they think they're doing. I think they're chasing the racetrack and almost afraid to make big changes. You know, they're just letting the driver get used to the track. They just about cannot do anything but do that and get back out on the racetrack under the green flag. Now, if they had to yell at it, they'd work on it. Bobby Labonte makes his stop. So does Bobby Hillen as green flag stops continue here at New Hampshire International. We'll be right back. Somebody's in the wall up here. The, the zero the car. Burton again. The zero uh, car we, just we've got in the wall at three. Now, this will make it. Does anybody not stop here? Uh, not putting the caution in. Oh, they got three. I don't think so. Unless it's the 98. Now they're waiting. The 98's on pit road There's the yellow. There's Boy, the if he'd stay out, he'd, he'd about have a lap on the field. I bet it's a 17 pit, and he never does. Uh, no, I, I think they've all stopped. Yes, Elliot stopped. Yeah. How about Waltrip? How about Darrell? was a lap down. But did he stop? Right. He might have been back on the lead lap. He probably did. He didn't have to stop yet because he made all those stops in the caution to right. try to adjust that pit. He's going to fill it with gas every time. So basically, hey, Davey may have put Ernie did. Irvin a lap down on that. Uh, yeah. That's cross start finish line. He did. Uh, he did. I, I don't yes, think Ernie had stopped yet. Of course, he's probably already... Yeah, Ernie oh. had not stopped for the same reason. Okay, gotcha. But I think still, I think Ernie went a lap down. Yeah, he's showing Ernie Hang on 87 to that laps and others 88. I, don't, I think that was for position, guys, because Ernie had not stopped because he had stopped so many times under caution. Well, scoring is showing it as a lap, uh, Glenn. Yeah, that, I'm going I'm to find out. I don't think that's right, though. Well, all right, well, Gail. Gail. Did Ernie just get lapped by Davey, or is he on the lead lap? Did Ernie just get lapped by Davey, or is he on the lead lap? He has. Okay. No replay. All right, the scoring is correct. They stopped at the same time. Ford is. Welcome back to New Hampshire International. Look at the right front of Jeff Burton's car. It is not turning. After he turned it into the wall up in turn number three. Many people thought he might have a top 10 day today with his flat track experience in the Bush series, but he's gone up and into the fence and now to the garage area. He brings out the third caution flag of the day at lap number 90. As they race back to the flag, Davey Allison beat Ernie Irvin to the flag. Lake Speed took Davey all the way down to the bottom of the racetrack so he could stay on the lead lap. Irvin was not quite as lucky. The Kodak car is now a lap down to Davey Allison, the race leader. Sterling Marlin is second, according to our unofficial rundown. Mark Martin is third. Mike Waltrip in fourth. And Daryl Waltrip may well be back on the lead lap. As uh, the rest of the cars on the lead lap pitted, Waltrip stayed out because he pitted earlier, remember, with a chassis problem after going the lap down. So he's back on the lead lap, and now he'll pick up the tail end of the line. Bill Elliott also making a stop here under caution. You know, Junior Johnson with Elliott said they were going to go a long run. If they had, they would have put the whole field a lap down just about, but they pitted right when the other leaders did. This speedway was a big gamble for Bob there. He built it without hope of a date from any major sanctioning body. But he's a self-made man. He's been in this position before. Here's Ken Squire. This is Bob Bear's contribution to speed in action. New Hampshire International Speedway. He's done it all himself. Signed the notes, paid the bills. His Yankee ingenuity first appeared in the midgets. The bear off he won all with the likes of men like Bill Airborne Eldridge. Didn't have a high school diploma, but that didn't stop him from owning a bank, shopping centers, housing developments, and a way of life that a dairy family farm kid could hardly imagine. Hannibal Hamlin's house, vice president under Abe Lincoln, South Paris, Maine. That's his home today. And here behind the gruff exterior, 
That love of speed in action is his passion, his classics. Duesenbergs, Packards, Mercedes. They're called one-offs, single editions, originals. A lot like the man that now owns them, Bob Bear. Looks just like your garage at home, Neil, huh? I got a pickup truck. Mine, mine's not that shiny. <laughs> One pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> what a collection, I tell you. This was the old Briar Motorsports Park. They've been running motorcycle races here, the annual Loudon Classic, for more than 40 years here and in the streets of the nearby town of here in earlier Laconia. They've had Trans Am sports car racing here, stock cars and drag racing on the old facility. Bob Bear bought it refurbished it. He knew the fans would support it. Now he's got Indy cars, Winston Cup, Bush Grand National Racing. Still has SECA motorcycle events. I'll tell you what, just like those classic cars, this racetrack is pretty shiny itself. But what a facility built. Five different race leaders so far. Seven lead changes. Average speed just over 100 miles an hour. We're working the third caution and we're getting ready to go back to green here. Only Ken Schrager and Phil Parsons in the garage. Well, they've now been joined by Jeff Burton's car. On the restart, Davey Allison will be on the point. Remember, all these cars just made pit stops prior to the caution. Sterling Marlin is second. Mark Martin is third. Jeff Gordon is fourth. Fifth is Dale Jarrett. Sixth is Rusty Wallace. Seventh is Kyle Petty. Eighth is Ricky Rudd. Joe Nemechek is ninth. Bobby Labonte is in the tenth spot. Eleventh, Jimmy Hensley. Twelfth, Terry Labonte. 13th is Rick Wilson, 14th is Mike Waltrip, and 15th, Lake Speed. Bill Elliott, Daryl Waltrip, Brett Bodine, and Jeff Bodine are also all on the lead lap. And there's about a dozen cars one lap down, including Irvin and Earnhardt. They're right on the inside line, right there, the 55 car. Right on the inside, got a shot to get a lap back, right up beside Davey Allison. It's Ted Musgrave and the U.S. Air Jasper Engines Board, and we are back to green. Musgrave's going to try it. He's going to get it. Back on the lead lap now. Allison has to look left for Earnhardt. Finds him. Here comes Marlin for the lead. Look at all the momentum Davey Allison lost after that brush and slide with Earnhardt. Back here. Quite a bulldog took a bite out of it. up the rear spoiler. See if we can see it from inside Jeff Gordon's car. And Allison's car just gets sideways again. He hauls it back in, but he has lost quite a few positions from the lead. We see the 18 car right there under Davey Allison. Jared trying to get under him also. You see Rusty Wallace moves down there quite a bit on the stop. Jared to the inside of Allison. Sterling Marlin is again the race leader. Mark Martin now second. This car, Rusty Wallace, is really hooked up. He's going by Davey Allison. No problem. NASCAR officials issued a reprimand down to the pits of Earnhardt, telling coroner Richard Childress any more contact, they will deal with it. Let's have a look again at what happened as Allison, the race leader, Earnhardt on the inside, trying to get a lap back. The 55 car took that inside line, 28 out there. Earnhardt goes in here and gets right up in the left rear of Allison. Eight also got him in the rear when he got him out of shape there. Looked like the front end on Earnhardt car might have broke loose a little bit there, Neil. Sure got in that quarter right there, and it looked like the eight might have tagged him a little bit also. Got Davey out of stride, showed him that outside lane. He lost a lot of positions. Allison currently fifth. Check that. Make that fifth, sixth, seventh. Well, guys, uh, on the Davey Allison car, why he slowed up, they're really concerned about the car. They're not quite sure what it was. They thought they had a lot of buildup on the right-hand side tires. Davey was a little concerned that he might lose the car going in after the restart. He slowed down. Then he thought he had a flat. Now he's saying he's got something loose on the car. So Davey doesn't quite know what's wrong with it, but they're going to try and ride it out a little bit, get a little feel for it. If they have to come in, they will. Again, Neil, that top groove down in one and two, the rubber kind of sits up there. 
After you've been running down on the bottom, it's real easy to find the marbles here. You don't have to step too far out of the groove to get there. When they talk about build up, you build up. These guys had just pitted prior to that caution, two or three laps. They got heat in their tires. The caution came out. They didn't want to pit again. So in turn, it really stuck a lot of that build up on those tires. It'll we'll take a lap or two to get them cleaned off. And that's what he was questioning. He just didn't have the feel he wanted with the car at that time. There's the factory stores for it of Dick Trickle, 75. The outside trying to move back up on Rusty Wallace. That was the point I was trying to make a while ago. On a restart like that, if you don't clean the tires really well, everybody said, well, Earnhardt should turn into it. And that's not necessarily so because you can have all that gold up on the tire and it goes in here. It's just like hitting sand in the driveway. You just skate right across the racetrack. It looked like he got a pretty good shot in that left rear housing of the car. And uh, right, right here we can see that there's no riding left on the left rear tire. I was trying to see it. You can tell for sure that the body work. I was concerned about damage to the rear end housing. It's hard to tell right now. The other thing about the left side of these cars is you see how much clearance they leave between the tire and the fender. As opposed to a Daytona or a Talladega car, you leave a lot of open space there for just that reason. Yeah, the Daytona and Talladega, they look like airplanes. The, the fenders miss the tires by a sixteenth of an inch. They come here, it looks like they took a torch and cut it off just to get it out of the way. <laughs> Jeff Gordon in second place ahead of Mark Martin. Gordon has not won a Bush race here. He's uh, in the top five, however, in his best effort. But not yet a victory on this racetrack. Looks like he is moving away from Mark Martin. It just seemed like once the race started, his car settled down. His cars were getting better and better as the day went on. And just like Buddy said, he's not snatching that wheel around as he did earlier. Well, he's getting smooth, and this kid has such a great driving rhythm. When he gets into it, he is just like in Charlotte, Daytona twice. I mean, he, once he gets there, he don't give it up. He really drives that race car well all day. Look at Dale Jarrett. He just went around the sixth car also. The car of Jarrett's is really working today. Well, you look at the left rear of Jarrett's car as we watch the Ford telemetry on board Mark Martin. Used to be, buddy, you guys would go to Darlington and get the Darlington stripe on the outside right rear corner. The left rear on the inside of every one of these cars has got some kind of bang on it, it seems. Well, there's a lot of racetrack there that we don't use here. If you notice, uh, about the last 15 feet of this racetrack, nobody's been up there. Right. Davey Allison and Mark Martin moving up on Rusty Wallace. On our 800 number, Carol from New Hampshire couldn't get tickets for today. She wondered if Bob was on the Winston Cup schedule for next year. Yes, Bill France, the pre-race, announced that he was proud to be associated with the Bear family in this great facility and hopes to be back here for many years to come. Okay, I'm going to explain that to you, too. Mike Coy bought half the grandstand for his friends up here. God, it feels like it. <laughs> My wallet's lighter for the result. Everybody in New England wanted tickets for this race. Here's Earnhardt again trying to get back on the lead lap. Sterling Marlin trying to cut him one lap down. Tight battle down the front straightaway. He's trying to do it the old-fashioned way, too. He's going to try to earn it on the outside there. Sterling's car went to the front earlier. He's in the lead now. Looks like he easily put Earnhardt back down. Looks like Sterling's hit somebody with the nose of his car. Since we saw it earlier, he's got a little bit of damage right on the frontal area of his car, but not enough to hurt it, it looks like. One thing to show you here, three and four is a little different from one and two. They come off turn number four here. But you go down into turn number one, and it's almost, it drives like a straightaway, like the car, the corner square between one and two and three and four. You come down here, and then all of a sudden there's this little straight squirt, and then you're turning left again to come off the corner. Three and four looks very, very different. Uh, Neil, like it's almost, like it's more of a rounded corner than a square corner. Yes, yeah, it's got a good arc all the way through three and four. Like you say, down to one, you get in, and you think you've got the turn made, and you get back in the throttle, then you got to turn again. So it really works the guys from the middle of the one right up off the second corner back there. There's a lot of difference in these two ends of these racetracks. And you just try to hit a happy medium, get through both ends as well as you can. You might give up a little on one end. Neil, most of the cars get in on the back side. The guys that come out of from the center to the back straightaway or front straightaway that really make the time here. You see Sterling a little sideways off that corner there. At New Hampshire International, we're 105 laps complete. <laughs> Close encounters, I'll tell you. <laughs> Gary, you just, you just love to shake us up with that shot, don't you? Bumper came. Uh-oh, there we go. You can see the groove. Look how yellow. Yep. 
Look, you can see the tire marks that go down and go away. Sam? Watch this car come by. Watch the tire mark. Oh, that didn't do it hard enough. <laughs> Smash your gas. Yeah, but the groove itself, you can see how yellow it is. It's hotter than anywhere else. Hello, do not adjust your set. Okay. Okay. Uh, the good one coming up is going to be Jared Wallace Allison. Boy, I, you're right about that. They're catching Jeff Gordon on the Welcome back to New Hampshire. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker. 108 laps on the board. Sun baked ground. It looks like uh, the Daytona Beach grandstand here. Here's our Cincinnati Electronics infrared camera. See the temperature of the racetrack. Still in that green zone where it was. Really easy to pick out the groove where they're running. Especially where those right side tires put a lot of heat into the racetrack. That camera measures heat, not light. Yeah, and there's a lot more heat on the left side of the car simply because on a track that's flat like this, where the car rolls over in the corner, they put both exhausts out the left side of the car. And that way you're throwing all the exhaust temperature out the left side. The body rolls over and hit the pipe on the right side, so this you move them both to the left side. And as the sun bakes down on this racetrack, we expect the track surface to be up a little bit in that yellow zone as we get a little further through this day. Here's your race leader, Sterling Marlin. He's punted somebody with the nose of that Thunderbird in these first hundred laps. Hard to avoid contract, uh, contact. <laughs> Avoid contact tracks. if you want to keep your contract. I called Gordon John. Cox. Okay, well, okay. What I'm going to tell you, if he keeps running like this, you talk about a contract. He's going to have one to talk about. 31.5 seconds. Last lap. Comes up on Dave Marcus. See more with a big difference with his race car. Most guys have to be right in the bottom to run good. If he gets shoved just like right then on the outside, he still makes a strong run off the corner. Bottom top, he's got it working anywhere he wants to right now. Peggy from California calls in, Neil, and uh, they had a press conference the other day. She wants to know whose car, what car you're going to run at Talladega. <laughs> going to run one of er uh, Earnhardt's cars. The children's team is going to take a second car to Talladega. Mm -hmm. Now, do you get the car you tested or the car that they'll one day tone in? It'll be a different car. The one he won with in Firecracker, he'll run it in the other one, but I mean they're identical. There's not very much difference. I guarantee you, Neil. One thing good about that deal, when you mash that button on the right side with your right foot, it's going to jump. You can get about 80% of them handled. <laughs> Handling up the straightaway. Second place is about to be a battle. There's Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett moving in. We should have saw this coming. Jarrett has been qualifying way in the rear of the field all the time and then coming to the front. He had a good qualifying run this week and his car is really working. Jarrett's right there in second place in the points. Earnhardt's a lap down, so this is a good chance for him to pick up some valuable points. Rick called in from New York, wondered why this is only a 300-lap race when most of the others are, are more. And, Rick, that's part of the negotiation between the track and NASCAR when they set the sanction for the event. And I believe it's part of a trend by NASCAR as they add tracks and add races to go to somewhat shorter distance events. Fans still get to see a lot of great racing. But it fits into a television time slot a little better. My and doesn't take up the whole day for folks that need to travel a greater distance coming or going. I think that's the key. I think we've got to start catering to the fans a little bit more. You know, how can you tell them you're going to leave a track at 10 o'clock at night and be at work on Monday morning? So I think you're going to start catering these fans a little more, let them get out of the traffic, get them back home, and then, you know, go to work on Monday mornings. Some 24 million people live within just a couple hours' ride of this racetrack. As of today, there just aren't enough seats here to hold all that want to be here. All week long, every radio station I heard has said, please do not come out Sunday. We're out of tickets. It's very rare you hear track advertising to stay away. But, I mean, they were sold out. The first day they opened up ticket sales, they were gone. Bill Elliott battling Rick Wilson, the STP Pontiac. 
Elliott moves along up a spot. 15th, make that 14th position for Bill. Boy, this is a team you just keep waiting to say what it's going to take to get these guys up front. You can't help but think it's going to happen. The team is just too strong. they got too much material there. Bill's an excellent driver, and you just keep waiting for that team to get up It's going to happen. There's too, good, too many good people involved. Neil Dave from South Carolina wants to know what number is going to be on your car. 31. We're on 31 now, Tom. A three plus one. Yeah. Car number three plus one. That's it. Davey Allison, Rusty Wallace moving up on the second place battle. Now they are 2.1 seconds behind Sterling Marlin on the point. For the battle for second spot, they have four cars in it. You're right. And while ago when Davey had that contact with Earnhardt, when Earnhardt got in the rear and shoved him out a little bit there, Davey questioned the car, and now he's feeling it again, and it's coming back. The car came from way back in the field earlier to the front. It looks like he's ready to do it again. Neil, what a, don't you think when he got sideways, he heated that right rear tire up, and he felt that thing in the next corner, and he, and he made it sideways again when he made another contact with the car. And it, it just was questioning in his mind, maybe I cut a tire down. Yeah, you got to be careful. you got to read that, make sure it's not having a problem. And 18 is not having a problem. No. He just went right around the board. And he said, they're shuffling it up. Dale Jarrett has gone to second. There you look at the second place car from inside third place Jeff Gordon's machine. We just saw Rusty Wallace right in the middle of that thing. He's sitting there in about fourth place. And I can't help but think back to that pit stop. We saw it on the stopwatch, how critical that was. And after this thing shakes out, he's right up front. That second or two gained on pit road. That's a lot of distance on the racetrack. When you go around here in 30 seconds. Oh, listen. Half a car length to lap with We got a lot of questions, buddy, about uh, Richard Petty last week at Daytona, why he didn't get in Kyle's car, and we don't have the exact answer, although we're not sure if Richard got an NASCAR driver's license for this year in a physical, but we know he does bring his helmet and his suit to every racetrack. However, he did not practice a car for that race, and that's one of NASCAR's rules, is that you must drive during practice to be eligible for a lead driver. Yeah, but he really wanted to get back in there. Yeah. You know, he didn't want Kyle's car to just fall out. That or maybe they asked Linda Petty. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. Would have been great. Bill Elliott and Brett Bodine. Kenny Bernstein, Quaker State Ford running at it here. He's trying to work his way up. He's having some problems. They were trying to get up front of him. And Joe Nemechek comes to pit road as this action goes on. And Bodine will move outside and get the spot. He was really happy to come up here. Brett Bodine was. For all the folks that had watched him run modifieds up here in New England, get a chance to, to say, hey, you know, I guess it'd be like going back to your high school reunion and being able to bring the whole office with you and say, here's what I do for a living. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dick Trickle goes to meet the flag man outside the fence at turn two. Pretty good against the wall there. And we will get a caution. This comes at lap 123. It's the fourth caution flag of the day. Dick Trickle and the Bob Rahilly and Butch Mock Factory Stores 4. We'll be right back to New Hampshire after this. Uh oh. <laughs> That's the best line you've had all day. Uh oh. Oh, thanks. Ooh. Ooh. Well, we talked to Rusty. Wait, wait till he makes the stop. That's up to, to you guys when you get stuff cleared. He's in fifth now. Probably come out leading. They're all coming in. Okay. Dick, what are you? Oh, he wants to push. push. A little steamy there, Dick. Yeah, that looks <laughs> like that looks like motor trouble there. Look. Looks yep. like it's on fire. What? That's what I thought. Looks like it's got the air cleaner on fire or something. Might have tried to restart it. Yeah, cough back and burn mm -hmm. that cleaner, I believe. <clears throat> what do you mean the best thing I've said um, all day? We might try Rusty if we... How do we clear this with the crew to be able to talk to him? Plus... Right, but didn't they clear it first <laughs> before we... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, you can ride up Mount Washington. 
The noise you'll hear, that gear noise, that's the cog that this steam engine drives, the cog. It's a gear drive down in the track, so that doesn't slip and you don't go sliding down the mountain in a hurry. Great way to go to the top of Mount Washington here. You can also drive up Mount Washington, but not in this car, I don't yeah, think. That cog you hear there is something broken. <laughs> that uh, trickle got him to push him off during the caution, got it restarted. But there's a lot of heat coming out right through the air cleaner opening on the top. Some other problem other than hitting that wall. That's midway down the back stretch. You see where the road course goes to the outside of the track here at New Hampshire. Dick Trickle getting a little assistance as pit stops continue. Cars a lap or more down making their stops this time around. We'll reset the field for you when we come back to the nation's newest super speedway, Loudoun, New Hampshire, and the Slick 5300 live on the Nashville Network. Look where Rusty's at now after that pit stop. Oh, where's he at? Uh, no, look up here. Has he made a stop? I want to make sure he's made second, a stop. Yeah. Second. Oh, boy. He's in second. Okay. 31st to second. Patty, the only thing I, I wanted to do was, does somebody check with him on the 30, radio first 33rd. with those guys to make sure it's okay to talk to him? Let me, let me oh, talk okay. to Rusty. <clears throat> okay, but that was what I meant was, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, I got the right channel here. Let me let me just check with him. Okay. Uh, to pop this thing up and let me just try Rusty and make sure he hears us. Okay. Rusty, this is TNN. We're in commercial. Just want to make sure you can copy us. I got you. Okay, we'll be to you in a second here. Thanks. I'd rather not talk right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Track history. Okay. Boy, he's on it, and he don't want to talk. Well, he don't want to talk. He's serious. He's <laughs> real serial. <laughs> real serial. Who else we got with the radio deal? Uh, Ernie. Ooh, I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> he's not having too good a day. No. What are we getting from Faxland? <laughs> One don't want to talk. <laughs> Exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 on the Nashville Network is brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? You see the results here of four hard years of work, a lot of years of planning and dreaming. This was the field in Bob Bear's dreams, a major super speedway complex for his native New England. But stymied by the permit process in trying to build anew, Bear purchased the aging Briar Motorsports Park in Loudoun, New Hampshire a multi-use facility that had played host to stock cars, sports cars, and motorcycle racing. Then Bear dug deep in his own pocket, $25 million deep, to build tunnels, pour concrete, grade dirt, and pave asphalt. And when he had built it, he pondered, would they come? Well, I don't know. Like I said, we'd like to have a cup date and we'd like to get a a uh, cart date, but uh, right now we haven't got anything, and I think when we get it done and people see it, we might have a better shot at getting something then. He's got it all. He's got a grandstand fill of race fans. He knew they would come, and now so too of all the major sanctioning bodies. Green flag as you watch it from our Ray Bestus Brakes aerial camera. And leading them down to turn number one, that's Sterling Marlin. And a determined, concentrating Rusty Wallace in tow. Earnhardt gets underneath Wallace. He's the second car in line, again trying to get back on the lead lap. Boy, 
Rusty started way back in his field, 33rd place. And this second right there behind Earnhardt. We got the eight car lead, and Earnhardt will lap down in the two car in second place. Earnhardt slides up into Sterling Marlin, fighting to get his lap back. Time. I, I, that looked like casual contact to me there. Might have just touched again. Tail wags on Marlin's car. Earnhardt's under him in the back straightaway. Turn three. Marlin's holding that line out there. He's not giving anything up. This might be an opportunity for Rusty Wallace in the two car. To get in under the three and try to get in there for the lead. Ted Musgrave went up and off the wall. All right, he's having such a good run, too. And Earnhardt and Marlin might have got together again there just a bit. There's Rusty coming yep. to the inside. That was that opportunity we were talking about. And there's a 12 car looking three down. Rusty had his hand out the window. Was he signaling Spencer? I couldn't tell what that was about. He stuck his hand out the window going down in the third turn there. Jimmy Spencer moves underneath Rusty Wallace. Spencer is trying to get back on the lead lap here. Guys, a fight for that lap there. Spencer trying to get up under Rusty Wallace. Rusty would like to have that inside line to try to work on that leader. You, you just saw what Buddy was talking about. Rusty just didn't have the steam off from the middle of the corner on out to hold Jimmy Spencer that time. Yeah, we have radio communication with Rusty Wallace. We tried to get him under the caution there. He did not count, so I'm concentrating. So we'll talk to him a little later on. That's just the way he's here. Really dedicated to get focused on what he's doing. It's he just wants to contract that race car. That's exactly what he's doing now. Lake Speed is taking the pure export. As we reach the 130 lap point, get back at Wallace from Jimmy Spencer's car. On the tail, or rather trying to get back on the tail end of the lead lap. There's Davey Allison peeking out around the outside of Wallace. Second and third position. Rusty was all the way off the track on that flat part down there, but he got the left wheel hung over. Yeah, and Davey had a lot better restart that time. I think he cleaned his tires a little bit better, and, and he's on the move now. It looks like his car is dialed in. He, he may just get by the two car. He's getting off the camera a little bit faster, or has been. The minute I said that, he got the full car. Right? <laughs> now, Earnhardt got his lap back, but he has not shaken Sterling Marlin. It's still right bumper to bumper with the three car. Unless they've made some chassis adjustments to really help on those cars. Here's Davey, he's trying to the two car. There's your leader, Marlin, the blue and white number eight Ford, very best of car. Gonna track Earnhardt for a while. And there's Wallace and Davey Allison, second and third. Max straightaway heading for three. Well, Davey's car makes a good move right in that part of the track. Rolls through the middle of the car really good. Oh. Jared Paul, I'm telling you, every time we look up, he's coming. That thing of his has really been working good. Dale Jarrett's whole team is really jail. I'm telling you, they're riding that points battle. They're going to be tough to deal with. One thing about Rick Hendricks, when he builds motors for other people, they're just as good as him motors in his own cars. And happy birthday, Rick. I know it's your birthday tomorrow. Guys, what do you do if you're Sterling Marlin? You'd love to keep Earnhardt a lap down. But to get up there and battle side by side with him is what you gain worth what could happen. I think he'll look up at the eight cars, got to look at the back that he's pulling away from these other guys. He's going to wait for the right opportunity. I think he's going to have to take that inside lane to get around the three car. I don't think Earnhardt's going to give him that thing. He's going to have to make him move on the inside. I think the eight car's going to have to work the inside to be able to put Earnhardt back down. I think the eight car has a better Hamlin car, though. If he'll just wait a little while. There's Spencer up high, and he's been racing with Rusty Wallace. I think he went in the corner a little bit too hard and got up high. For the marbles. Jimmy Hensley going by. See him shaking the wheel. He's trying to put, clean those tires like you're talking about, buddy. He got up in those marbles. He's trying to see what's wrong with that thing. Saw on that old... Oh, oh. Is and it's Earnhardt. Three car spun coming off. That's us off turn two over there. Well, the crowd is on their feet. This whole front grandstand came to their feet. No harm 
done. Earnhardt's back up. No foul now. No caution, so they're still running. We stay green. He spun to the inside of the back straightaway. He came back up on the racetrack, but he is no longer a concern to Sterling Marlin. We saw some fire under the car. Let's have a look at what happened. That's coming up off turn two over there. Whoops, just a little bit of help, it looked like. A car was going to get that inside line. Earnhardt turned around right there in the middle of the track. Some Lucky they didn't get hit. Some laps you eat the bear, and some laps <laughs> the bear gets you. <laughs> Look at this line of traffic coming behind them here. Good job by these guys running third, fourth, and fifth back here. Boy, Rusty right through the smoke. Didn't have, didn't have any idea where he was How going. much do you think these guys can see with all this dust and tire smoke? Now there's Earnhardt outside Jimmy Spencer. Now this is for position. Both these cars are one lap back and they're racing for 20th place now. Look at that left front bumper on cover on Earnhardt's car. When the car spun backwards, it looked like they might have snatched the brake ducts and stuff loose on that left front as it got backwards. I think some of that's rubbing right there. Spencer had trouble just a little early, almost got up in the wall himself. Still running just as hard as they were. A little smoke coming off the left front of Earnhardt's car must be rubbing where that stuff broke loose. Yeah, you're right. You can see a little piece of metal hanging off the left front corner there. Yeah, there's a brake hook all the internal works of that thing's missing. Spencer going a little wide there again. He comes off the corner. Earnhardt trying to keep it down low. What people don't realize is when you turn one of these things around backwards, everything on these cars are designed like a bullet going forward. When you turn around, you don't have Oops. to hit There's Earnhardt way outside going down in the corner. And here comes traffic. Must have a tire going down. They'll have to come in and get that fixed. But as you turn around backwards, the air actually snatches that stuff off the car, going in the wrong direction. Well, guys, uh, the crew is actually awaiting his arrival. He's coming down pit road right in the next lap. They watch his car go by every time. Earnhardt said that I think the brakes are gone. So that's what's causing him to back up. He might have had some brake duct work up loose a little bit. So they're going to have to bring him in under green because Dale cannot slow down in the corner. So uh, big time trouble for Earnhardt today. He had a tough day yesterday, Randy, in the Bush North race here, as we saw. Burned up a couple of right fronts going off into the corner and finally parked the car. There's a bit of damage to it. You know, if he's saying he doesn't have any brake, there's a chance of that metal work snatch the line off the car, off the one of the brake lines on the left front. He doesn't have any brakes. He's not going to be able to run around this place very long. Kenny Schrader's back in the race. 127 laps behind. Took a lap or two and then headed to the garage once again. You know, I think you're exactly right. No brakes. Taking this wide line in the corner. He don't want to get behind anybody. And at the end of the straightaway, you see him back off about four or five car lengths for anybody else. There. Yeah, they're picking up the radio contact back and forth between him and the crew. And they're saying no brakes on the car. So he's just going to have to hope nothing happens in front of him. Well, look at Terry Labonte got into the back of something. Uh -oh. That could have possibly been that dust and stuff. When it stacked up on the back straightaway, straightaway some of them lived. He might have ran and got it. I didn't see that damage before that happened. Trying to see the back of somebody who looked like it about to patch up. <laughs> Something with the other piece to the puzzle, right? Davey Allison closing in on race leader Sterling Marlin as we come up on 150 laps halfway, five laps from now at New Hampshire. said touche. Yeah, we got a bunch of faxes from people saying, why don't they penalize Earnhardt? Well, why he don't just, they ever deal he got with them? I think he just got now. penalized. Yeah. <laughs> Satellite people, I mean, no What's that harm. Gary? Oh, he's back yeah. out. Yeah, he's back Straight. out. Then out. Oh, man, he's flying. Earnhardt, Earnhardt is having a time. Look at this. He hasn't got any brakes now. That means when he comes in, he's going to drag the crew about 300 yards <laughs> down to the... Right. You have to turn the switch off on the back straightaway and let coast yeah. in with the in gear. Hey, Musgrave and Rec Wilson are having a heck of a battle here. They've just about traded colors on those two cars in turn four. Stand by. Yep. <laughs> Don't adjust your set. 
Boy, Rusty's laying in there with these guys now. Come on, Rust. Yep. Yeah, if it's still good. We're going to have a race to lead here. They don't wreck quick. each other first, Gary. Okay. Okay. And 30. Hard catches. 30 don't have enough for an end. No. Uh, we also might do something on the Labonte brothers being 10th and 11th. Jeff, Jeff Gordon fell off the pace then. Yeah, I haven't seen much of him since the pit stop. And then adjusted yourself the wrong way. Yep. get old, you start getting nice. <laughs> Halfway. New Hampshire International Speedway. They've just taken the halfway sign. The Slick 5300. Sterling Marlin trying to win his first Winston Cup race at New England's first Winston Cup race. Now, the Grand National Tour did a northern swing, 1964 to 67. They went to Old Bridge, New Jersey, Bridgehampton, New York, up to Fonda, New York, and Iceland, Thompson, Connecticut. Since Winston started with the series and took on the name Winston Cup, there has not been a race in New England. This is the first. Jeff Gordon overhauled on the inside by Mark Martin. We saw Mark drive under him. One of those Gordon. We see him working that wheel a little bit like he did the first of the race. Car might have got away from him just a little bit. Changed on him some. Only one pit stop so far. The next should be coming in about 10 to 15 laps. The race leader. There's Mark Martin. He looked for the Windshield post on the Babylon floor that latch at the top of the screen holds the window net in. Yeah, I was just gave us word for 24 and 8. They took a round of bite out of the car. So the track must be getting tighter and tighter. We see him working that wheel a little bit more. He's anticipating that took some bite out of it. Maybe not enough. One of our phone-in questions on the 800 number is on a lot of road race cars, you can adjust the chassis to push or lose condition from inside the car. See that again in NASCAR racing? No, and I hope not. Boy, that would be a disaster for me when I was driving. <laughs> the guys were talking about Jeff Gordon falling back a little bit. They took one round of bite out of the car, and you said it was a little tight. Now they got another problem. Jeff just radioed in that they're having problems with the brakes. The brakes are fading on the car, going away. So uh, he's going to be dropping back a little bit. You get on the brakes real hard going into these corners, it's going to be hard to cool those things. Maybe he can just back off for a few laps and they'll come back with that serious problem. Probably something you'll have to contend with the rest of the day. Amy Allison trying the inside as we give you our Napa field standing update because there are no unimportant parts. Napa, Davey Allison looking for Sterling Martin, Marlins. That, that looked like he had that inside line. He lifted a little bit, Sterling came down. Allison's been reeling me in, but look at the two car. He's sitting there right there with him. Talking about braking being a big factor. Rusty Wallace's team really works on that braking stuff. Henske's involvement, road racing. He should be in good shape. Well, Rusty does very well at Martinsville, and everybody keeps comparing this racetrack to Martinsville. It's Martinsville plus about 100 miles an hour where you start using the brakes. So it's really important to be able to save the brakes and have all the stuff that this car has. Before you call it an ass, the last Winston Cup race in New England, when it was called the Grand National Series, Bobby Isaac won it in Route 2 of the Championship in 1970. I think 5 8 mile was the site. Yeah, but you're the only guy in the booth that's won a race here. Yeah, I guess you're right. You're also the only guy in the booth who's hit the wall here. Let's see, right about <laughs> there. <laughs> that goes along with it, Mike. And there, and a couple places up and outside the road course. Well, we saw Allison move in there and got the nose up under the eight. I thought he could come right back, but sometimes you make that run and you just got to settle everything back down. 
get the car under you, get that feel back, and then make that run again. I think that's what Davey's getting ready to do. Following Sterling Marlin. Like Davy's car is able to run through the middle of the corner just a little bit lower than the eight car. Seems to roll free right in the middle. To get in there, there now, watch him make that little close right there. Try to make the run up off the corner on him. better down in one and two, Mike. He seems to be able to make a lot of room, a lot of distance up in one and two, and he's been losing some down in three and four. Well, here he comes out and around way off the pace, either brakeless or without braking effectiveness right now. Out of the way, very uncomfortable, I guarantee you. Here's a question from an old-time race fan, Mike from Washington. Why the cars don't have to display their cubic inches on the hood anymore? Well, they used to do that all the time, but now everybody has the same cubic inches. Used to, you had an option at times, a 457 motor, 366 or whatever, but now everything is 358 cubic inches. And look at the billboards on the hoods. There's not room for numbers anymore. <laughs> all right. Buddy, back when you raced and uh, we were still uh, in grade school. Oh, yeah. Tell did they, about it. <laughs> didn't they used to put the horsepower on the hoods? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We told it all. I mean, we didn't have many secrets back then. But as you said, these are running billboards anymore. Look at this Texaco car right here. Where would you put anything on that hood? <laughs> Plus, you'd have to have a lie detector test to get a few horsepower numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you might be right. Two Fords and a Pontiac battle for the lead here at New Hampshire International. 160 laps next time by. The inaugural Winston Cup race. You know, sometimes I've had these engine builders tell me how good the motors were. The hood aren't big enough for the numbers they tell you. <laughs> now Wallace is right back up to the two fours. We saw a little bit of this yesterday in the Bush Series. As we talked earlier, run a car hard, get the tires hot, and you back up some. Looks like the 80 and 28 really worked hard on each other while ago. Rusty's winding me in, but here's Davey trying that move off turn two again. As they come out of turn two, it's quite a gap back to fourth and fifth. Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin. Fourth and fifth spots. Might have to straight away. So these three have not exactly checked out, but there is a little bit of distance. Now we're getting close to that pit stop. Yeah, they were talking about the next green stop. Stop it. Guess who has the advantage on that two car can be tough then. All right, let's let's look back to the fourth place car as they come off this corner. There are your three leaders, Marlon, Allison, and Wallace. There is Dale Jarrett, and here is Mark Martin. Jarrett is 2.3 seconds behind the lead pack. Moving up on the Western Auto Chevy, Darrell Waltrip, and Wallace is back in caution. Everybody jumps out of the throttle. There is debris on the racetrack. Boy, it was getting close to that green flag stop. These guys would be glad to do it on the caution. Somebody dropped something out in turn number two. I thought something happened to Rusty Wallace. We saw him yeah. fall off. He was the first guy yeah, to he acknowledge, it. And they acknowledge that yellow flag. Well, what happened there, the spotters hear this on their radios, and they call the driver and say, caution, caution, and uh, he backed off and then he heard that. So we're under caution. This one comes out at lap 163. It's the fifth caution flag of the day. We'll be back to New Hampshire after this. A word from Davey Allison about what this track might be similar to on the circuit. Well, it's got a lot of similar characteristics to, to both places. Uh, Martinville got long straightaways and tight corners. This place has long straightaways and tight corners. Uh, Phoenix is a one-mile track, and it's flat. This is a one-mile track, and it's flat. So it's, there are a lot of similarities between the two. Uh, who knows what's going to happen here this weekend. Maybe we'll get it figured out good enough to win the race, and maybe we won't, but it's going to be a lot of fun anyways. Is anybody down at Jeff Gordon's car to, to see what they're doing to try to cool the brakes or anything? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. There and there. He's not having a great day, Patty. 
you know. Well, we got to use it though. <laughs> uh, maybe somebody in the pits can ask one of the maybe maybe get Buddy Parrott to call Rusty and see if he'll talk to us if somebody's down there. Came out second out of that yeah. deal. Hey, point under caution. How about that, uh, Michael Drainus? How about that uh, that oh, piece yeah. uh, no, on no, the, the no, night no, the historic no, footage? No, his, no, we did that. But we got a little historic footage. What does that say? Uh, it says a bunch of stuff. Oh, Rick, happy birthday, Rick. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's already said. Yeah. That car is Bubba, is it? He's yeah, it sure is. Yeah. It's a Bubba car. Pit Road is a busy place as you ride with Jimmy Spencer, pitting right behind Ernie Irvin. Of the windshield. A little soap and ammonia there. He felt the right side come down off the jack. Both those cars going up in the air. They are battling for position. One lap down, back about 18th spot. And Dale Earnhardt will get a penalty, as will Rick Mast. They both pitted too early under caution. When pit road opens, the cars on the lead lap get to pit first. And then a lap later, the cars one lap down. So both Earnhardt and Mast will have to restart at the back of the longest line. I just noticed when Earnhardt come in, his rear wheel locked up. He has nothing but rear wheel brakes. That's, that's worse than having none at all. Yeah, you go down the corner, you can see the skid marks. When he came in, it locked the rears and nothing on the front. You go down the corner, hit the brakes, and wants to chatter the rear wheels. Earnhardt came in here with a 250-point advantage over Dale Jarrett. Now they're going back under the hood. And a look at the master cylinder. Looks like one of the crewmen has a jar of brake fluid there. They'll probably go back out and try not to lose a lap here and see if they can come back in and pick it up. It looks like they're going to go down a lap anyway. One to go. He's going to have to race the pace car down to the end of pit road. The green light is up. But he will not lose another lap. Baby Allison up front. Rusty Wallace, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd got a good pit stop. He's up in the top five with Dale Jarrett. The furthest any driver has come to win. The Major League Stock Car Race. 43rd starting spot, Johnny Mance won the 1950 Southern 500 in a Plymouth. Didn't change tires when everybody else did. He came from 43rd to win it. And Fonny Flock in 1953 won the Raleigh 300 on a one-mile speedway. An Oldsmobile. He might be safe with that record. I don't know <laughs> I if anybody's so. going to take it away. <laughs> I think so. We don't start 43 cars too many places anymore. Five leaders, nine lead changes amongst them. Average speed creeping up now, 101.9. Under the fifth caution, 22 caution laps so far. Only six cars officially out of this race. Hood goes up and down on Daryl Waltrip's car on pit road. And will take you up through the gears of Mark Martin when they come around for the restart. You see the indication there, it's in second gear, the little yellow line on second. Watch him wind her up, he's in second, 8,300. Well, that thing must have read wrong. That's got to be third gear. <laughs> I know. I've never seen him shift him from second to fourth, but maybe he pulled her over fourth gear. If he gets that kind of speed in second gear, I'm going to wonder. The RPM is going. He might have a problem pulling over fourth because he didn't get a lot of RPM with it. When we go down the back window right here, you'll see how much we use to up. Almost. Let's go back up front, buddy, for a second, <laughs> just to watch Davey Allison as he battles Rusty Wallace for the lead. Now, Ernie Irvin is trying to get back on the lead lap. He is in 17th position, one lap down. He's got a good bit of damage to that four car, but he's trying to get that lap back. So he's got a great pit stop in that exchange with Ricky Rudd. He's up to the top five. You see Sterling Marlin back there in third place behind Davey. He was late, he ended up coming out third after the stop. First, he got him out front right now. See the bright yellow car just behind Rudd and Harry Gant there. That's Greg Sachs. He's gone two laps down to that board. Very, very happy to get up here where all the modified fans that followed him when he drove Ernie Wilsburg's car to many victories up around here. Get the chance to, to run a Winston Cup car in front of the folks that followed him through his career. Sachs running two laps down right now in the country time car. Side by side, there's Jeff Gordon underneath Morgan Shepard. And Shepard is a lap down at this point. Gordon pulling up on Dale Jarrett. And Mark Martin is right there as well. But not by his car. Dale Jarrett's in fifth place. And there's Jeff Gordon. Gordon that wheel, just like we saw him at the first. 
first of the race, having a really fight that car right in the middle of the corner. A couple of big bites out of that wheel right in the middle of the corner. They were so strong early and to go this far, but I mean, it takes something like this to get them back on track. Also, Here sure again, Leo Jackson, Stole Chevrolet. That car is just, just like when we see Dale Elliott. That's a car that has to win a race pretty soon. They'll get it all worked out. They're the type of people that never give up. Seventy-four laps. Rusty Wallace, Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, and Ricky Rudd up in front of this pack. Dale Jarrett in fifth, Jeff Gordon in sixth, seventh is Mark Martin, and Kyle Petty is up to eighth. I think Jeff Gordon his problem as far as the brakes is move right up on the back of Dale Jarrett now, and his car seems to be working just a little bit better than it was before this car. Maybe had a little bit of chance to cool that thing down. And a lot of these cars, sometimes the frontal area, they cover them up with duct tape, thinking they might not need it. He might have had a little bit of left they could do something with, but like I say, but he seemed to be better than he was just before the caution. Let's go to Jeff Gordon's pit. Here's Glenn. This is Ray Everham and Ray, you told me earlier that he's got a brake problem. They've cooled off now. He's okay now, but uh, problems still remain. Yeah, this track's a little harder on brakes than we thought. We brought the same amount of cooling that we normally run, but it looks like we needed to get more air in front of it. So he could run a few laps hard, and we've had to calm it down. He's doing a good job, and um, we just we hate that it's, it's happening, but we're going to have to try and finish this race best we can. So we're just going to have to let the brakes cool when they get hot. That pretty much tells the story, guys. He's good right now, but when they heat up, he's going to have to back off. And there goes Mark Martin underneath Jeff Gordon to take the spot away. Well, like we said, he looked a lot better, and he was for a few minutes. But Bernie so. Irvin, almost into the wall. You saw him there out the right windshield of Jeff Gordon's car. Excuse me, buddy. But he got <laughs> way up in the marbles and almost to the fence. Almost don't count. Don't do that anymore. Nope. <laughs> we stay under green. First call for Irvin. I think one thing that helps at this track, Mike, we've seen a couple of cars get out of that groove. This thing is 65 foot wide. You can get in there too hard, make a mistake, and there's room for recovery. For some of the track, once you slip, you're not going to fence. We've seen several cars lose it, be able to stay off the wall and get back into attention. I'll show you that again from a different angle. You saw it out the windshield of Jeff Gordon's car. No wonder you called attention to it. He was out there in the gray stuff. What's your back end slipping? Is that old marble stuff out there? 
That's when you stop and start all over again. <laughs> Almost want to call timeout and start over again. There's Hot Strickland. He was looking for a relief driver. And Neil, when you said Jeff Burton was going to stand by in relief, I was a little skeptical because NASCAR has a rule against rookies driving in relief. Randy Pemberton found out the answer. You're right. Well, that's right. Uh, he has won here before, like we talked about before this race. Jeff's got as much uh, time on this racetrack as anybody out here, so it looks as if they're going to let him in the race car. He's got his helmet here. Hut Strickland, they think, is suffering from food poisoning. He came down a little bit sick last night. Uh, the crew says he sounds all right, but he's very, very weak in the car, so they're going to hopefully wait for a caution flag, but if uh, Hut can't go, he's going to pull it in and just going to get the car. Randy, I think there's a pretty good height difference between Strickland and Burton. Hunt is a good bit taller, but hopefully Jeff will fit in there okay. Yep, NASCAR has waived the rule prohibiting rookies being relief drivers. Jeff Burton has a win on this racetrack, so he's well experienced here. Mark Martin is up the spot. Yeah, and he made it okay. I tell you, Mark Martin's on the go right now. And some of these guys might have been having a great trouble, but he's not one of them. 81 laps, and that puts Mark Barton into the top five. Let's take a look right here at the six car. You can see how much duck work he had on the brakes. You know, we were looking at Jeff Gordon a while ago. He's got a small amount of brake area. This six car, look down on the lower front area of that car. All that entire area is opened up for brakes. I don't think he's going to have a problem with them. Getting a you lot know, of air there. But, Mike, you know yourself, Jack Roush, the 24 hours a day, telling all the road racing he does, he's in good shape. Buddy, how much of that is to slow the car, and how much of it is to set the nose going into the corner? Okay, you watch him go down the back straightaway here. Just about now, the brake comes on. He keeps that brake on way into the corner there, so he's using a lot of brake, especially when he's turning like that. I think that's probably, I think most of the guys here have to use like These cars are capable of good numbers down the straightaway, mile per hour, and they just got to get that thing low down to get it slow enough to make this real steep arc in the middle of the corner. Riding with Mark Martin, out of turn two and down the back straightaway here at New Hampshire International. Martin trails by 4.6 seconds, and there's Derek Culp getting overpassed quickly by three cars. Center of your screen, Jimmy Hensley, picking up Purolator sponsorship for three races for the Kowicki Racing Team. And though Jeff Bodine has purchased the team, they are operating as Allen Kowicki Racing Inc. through the entire 1993 season. That answers one of our calls on our 800 line. So Alan Kulicki Racing is still listed as the car owner. Bobby Labonte trying to move up on Jimmy Hensley. This is 10th and 11th place. To count Bill Elliott just ahead of them. That's ninth. the battle. They're trying to catch Kyle Petty in eighth. You know, I bet when we get to talk to Rusty Wallace next time he'll talk to us, he's leading this thing and just <laughs> hammering, man. He's getting on with it. Doing well. Ninth we'll on back here. Bobby Labonte there. He's running Extremely smart race today. I think he's, got, he's looked after his car quite well. You see him moving on the inside there. He's doing a good job. Here's big brother Terry. The nose of that car still flapping a bit as it has for about since the last caution period or two. With Rusty Wallace leading at 186 laps at New Hampshire International Speedway. We'll be right back live on TNN. <laughs> the cornflakes have crumbled. Yes, he has wrinkled his cornflakes box. What do you think people say when that McDonald's car goes by and we say Hut Strickland's got food poisoning? He, oh, Jesus, I didn't think of that. That's why when he handed me the card, that's I, I why I was going to say it. he's out of coffee, but I am about no, to. I, no, <laughs> I've seen that commercial one too many times. Yep. I don't think he ate a McDonald's last night. Jesus, I What's that? Uh, you know, about the neat... The, I don't know what it shows us that's different from what we had before. Pretty much to it. I don't think so. No. Well, then let's 
do it and get it done. You, you got to do it. Well, let's do it. You are one ugly race car. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Here's a good question. What is Bill Elliott going to do next year? Mm. Good question. Here's some guy. Do we have a brochure on that? Thank you. Amazing. And Rusty and David just making the sound a lot of the feel. Mm -hmm. Who else can come up the show, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah. Set high in the White Mountains at the foot of the Presidential Range at the Mount Washington Resort, the ski area and the Pond Railway. Cogging along here, Rusty Walsh. He and Davey Allison are, are doing their best to stink up this show. I mean, we've got a good competitive race here, but two cars hit the handle on a flat track and begin to, begin to pull off and away. Speaking of railways, these two are on rails anywhere they want to go. And that, once Rusty got out front, he's moving away. We talked about the Labonis. Here's a brother act, Jeff Bodine in the Motorcraft Ford and Brett Bodine in the Quaker State Ford. They are in 12th and 13th position. Jeff, who won at Sears Point, three top five finishes. And Brett Bodine. And the third car in that picture is Jeff Nast. He's still running quite well. That was a Skull Classic Ford of Richard Jackson. Brother Carl, and of course, brother driver. Rick Mast currently is in 20th spot, one more action. Ricky Rudd, Michigan winner, and Mark Martin right with him as they let by Rick Wilson. Rudd has four top five finishes this year. Mark Martin's coming back to the front. You know, he got back a little bit on the glass. Caution. He's been picking them off. We've seen him work his way back up there. I tell you, he's not worried about brake trouble. He's driving that thing as deep as he did when he first started the race out of it. Yeah, one thing it helps to Roush, like you're talking about on that RPM, he doesn't mind twisting the motors. And you can use the motor as a brake, just like a truck. You know, little Jake brake or something. They, can use it. they pull enough RPM, you lift on that baby, she starts slowing down. The compression release. <laughs> Jake Brake in a Winston Cup car? Yeah, man. <laughs> How about a Mark Brake? Mark Tuesday. <laughs> they build those in Bloomfield, Connecticut. That's one of my own I wasn't much of a battle for 10th, but you see Bobby Labonte just go by uh, Jimmy Hensley there. This is one of Bobby's best runs in Winston Cup racing. He's been in the top five most of the day. He has one top 10 finish, Charlotte. He had a very good chance of maybe winning Charlotte. He had a caution right near the end there and brought everybody up home. Super good I can't help but think when one of these bush drivers moves, moves up to Winston Cup, he's almost hesitant to get out there and really assert himself around the Winston Cup guys and take chances. Then he comes to a place where he's got more experience track-wise than the Winston Cup guys, then he really steps up the pace. But Bonnie knows he's got a long time deal with his car. He's just working his way into Winston Cup racing. He's doing a good job. Having a good run here today. He is in the top ten. Up front, Rusty Wallace. Over Davey Allison, Sterling Marlin, Mark Martin, and Ricky Rudd at your front five. There's the separation. Here's Randy. Well, I'll tell you, Davey Allison is talking to his crew as he goes down the straightaways. It's amazing to me. The car is running second. Davey's having a good run, but they're talking about winning. Davey comes over the radio and says, I think we need to take a bite out of the a round of bite out of the car when they pit in about 18 laps. There, Rick McReynolds, the crew chief, says, Davey, do we really want to do that right now? I know it's splitting hairs, but do we want to take a chance on doing that? Davey comes back and says, I think so. So we'll see what happens if they make one chassis adjustment or no chassis adjustment. I'm betting on the driver. What about you guys? Yeah, if they don't listen to that driver, they might as well put a robot in there. If he thinks that thing needs a round of bite out of it, I can't help but think they'll cater to him on that and, and take it out and just see if the car gets better because they've still got enough time in this race. The next coach, they can put it back in. That's right. As well as he's running, how far back did he fall? Now, here's one. Barbara from Arizona calls in. In a photo finish, if both cars finish in a dead heat, who is the winner? Well, it's a dead heat. 
They split the money and they've done it once, and I think the fellow who was involved in it is sitting to my right. Yeah, I keep telling Kale that the accelerator cable on the car flipped out about three inches and I had to run about half throttle and he was able to close in on the, the only dead heat that's ever been reported in NASCAR. For third place in the 1974 Fire Tracker 400, Buddy Baker and Cale Yarbrough. Then they split the third and fourth place money? Uh, you know, I don't even remember. I think we both got paid. Yeah, that's I believe exactly they did. what they did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shows you how important money was to you, Buddy. You didn't even notice. Man, I just love the sport. I never did go in this thing and make a lot of money. And I managed to do just that. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty Wallace from 33rd to the lead. He's the fastest second round qualifier. He has six tenths of a second. On second place, Davey Allison. 2.9 seconds further back is Sterling Marlin in third. And behind Marlin, 1.6 seconds to Mark Martin, and then a second and a half back to Ricky Rudd. You know, we had Randy tell us a while ago, Davey had like one round of bite out the car. It almost shows up when you watch. He's able to close in, get down in the corner right here. But in the middle of the corner, Rusty can turn that car down and go. Davey's losing a little bit of time right in the center. So that's one reason he's won that round of bite out of that car, is if he can pick that throttle up just a little bit quicker. Wallace and Allison move past Greg Sachs. Country time for it. Cold lemonade wouldn't be a bad thing today. 90 degrees out there in the grandstand. No, and let me tell you, in the garage area, they keep that lemonade on the back of that tractor trailer rig, and there's a lot of empty cups laying on the ground down there this week. Well, I'll tell you, in the garage, they were parked right next to Bill Davis, the Bobby Labonte rig with Maxwell House coffee. There's a whole lot more lemonade going out here than there was coffee. It's been record heat up here. New Hampshire, 90 degrees all week long and high humidity. A little cooler today. We should have got the Suntan franchise up here, Suntan Lotion. One of the 10 days of summer here in New Hampshire. Bill Elliott and Bobby Labonte are battling for ninth position and have been for about the last 15 or 20 laps. Yeah, Bobby's doing a great job. I tell you, really, I think the experience he has on this racetrack from running Bush Grand National showing up now. He, he's reeling in the loving car there. You can see he's taking a real smooth line down in the corner. That's everything. Driver's being real smooth. You see he's not cramping the car there coming off the corner, accelerating well off the corner. He's just driving it the way you're supposed to. He's not won here, buddy, but in Bush Grand Nash in six Bush starts, he's finished second twice and four times in the top ten. For those lap times, it's just hard to give up on one of the laps. You know, somebody comes to the track and runs up, gets a lot of laps in the race track. Good feedback for what it takes to get around. Bill Elliott, Bobby Labonte scored. It's a Bobby Hill and the Heilig Myers in the Don Levy car just ahead. Last win on an oval track for a Ford. Wow, Morgan Shepard back in Atlanta in March. On the uh, Snowball, <laughs> Snowman 500. You know, that's kind of deceiving though because they have had chances to win a ton of races this year. Uh, Mark Martin himself should have won four or five races already and he just had bad luck. And the last time a Ford won on a mile oval was Davey Allison last November at Phoenix. It's Bobby Labonte had a run at Bill Elliott on the inside there as they move up on Rick Wilson and the STP Pontiac. And it looks like Rick might be having a little bit of a break problem also. You notice he's getting in from an awful slow there. And you don't do that. Rick's a hard driver. He would never go down the corner that slow. Rusty Wallace moving up on Michael Waltrip in the Pennzoil Pontiac, who's at the tail end of the lead lap. We'll be right back to New Hampshire after this. Oh, here's a call on the 800 number. Why is NASCAR showing favoritism to this car? I'll let Neil answer. No, that. I don't think. Well, I don't think. We'll do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think Davey's coming in this time. 
If they're trying, yeah, they'll be able to make it. Well, they just what they can go 100 laps? I don't think so. They're gonna have to go 92. 92. Right now. Gas they can make. I, I would think. I haven't seen anybody run out. They'll about have to do four tires. Oh yes. There's Harley Gant. They need another degree. French Canadian caution flag. There's a lot of them up here. <laughs> I didn't mean that satellite fan. Come on, I I carried it down here myself. It's 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 on the yeah. Okay, thanks. Right, they're playing on Marlin's car that uh, it's just tight. They don't, they don't seem to have a brake while he's just tight right now. Okay. at New Hampshire coming up to 90 laps to go and the possibility that these cars just might be able to make a pit stop here and then go the distance. Rusty Wallace, your race leader, has just lapped Terry Labonte, the 14th place car. Well, Buddy Parrish standing on top of the uh, tool chest up here, a few good times for Rusty Wallace. They were discussed with Rusty, asked him how's the outside tires, the right-hand side tires. Rusty said everything is good. Matter of fact, Buddy sent it down here. He wants to talk to him. So we'll come up here and talk to him. Buddy, an amazing story. You guys, 33rd to where you're running. Great run. Well, you know, our, uh, our qualifying time wasn't indicative of what we could run today. And uh, Rusty, uh, you know, he just told everybody, said, guys, I messed up qualifying. We're doing it. The guys are doing a great job with him. He's driving the heck out of that race car. Little genuine drive Pontiac's doing great. Everybody's feeling good about it. So, uh, okay. Any sudden changes at all? Any changes? No, uh, we just adjusted a little air pressure. We haven't put any bite in or out all day. Buddy Parrott, veteran crew chief. Got Richard Petty, his 200th win. Put a lot of drivers in victory lane. And Rusty Wallace several times this season already. One of the real organizers in this yeah. world, Buddy Perry, wherever he goes, in there. And he'll motivate you, too. That or knock your head off one. <laughs> well, sometimes with a hammer, but he will no motivate you. Derek Cope in the Bojangles four to Cale Yarborough. To be overlapped by Wallace. And climbing past Derek Cope has shortened up the interval to the second place car. There's Wallace, there's Davey Allison. Four wins for Rusty this year, eight top five finishes. Davey also had to deal with a lap car there. He might have lost that that he gained. Getting close to that pit stop. They, you know, if they come in there, I can't help but think they can go the rest of the way. That's what they're gauging. They're trying to get to that window where they can make this last stop, and that'll be it. 86 laps to run. First green flag pit stops occurred about lap 81. The last time anybody among the leaders was in was lap 164. There's Dale Jarrett moving up on uh, Ricky Rudd. He's been closing in on him, and this is for position. That's right. Rudd is the fifth-place car, and Jarrett, who is second in the point standings, can gain a lot of ground on Earnhardt today because Earnhardt, having brake trouble, is two laps down and in danger of going three laps down. Gonna be getting close those pit stop. I see the guys over pit wall are stacking tires up, getting them ready to come out. So just a few laps away from these guys having to come in. Harry Gant has made a pit stop, went past Mark Martin like I thought there was something wrong with Martin's car, but it was just Gant having fresh tires. And here's Jarrett trying to make the move for fifth place. Wow, he made that look easy. Ricky Rudd loses the position, but doesn't lose any ground to Dale Jarrett. Just picks up right where he was running. Now in sixth place. Still a, still one pit stop to go. Should we stay green? Rudd, of course, will form his own team next year. Take sponsor Tide with him. 
and who Terry Labonte will replace him with the Rick Hendrick organization. I tell you, Terry Labonte will win a lot of races. He's the type of race car driver. He's very much like Rudd. They're just they're getting kind of the same type of race car driver to put back into the team. Earnhardt has just gone a third lap down to Rusty Wallace. Word is pit stops about lap 240 if we stay green. But if one of those lead lap cars comes in and gets fresh tires and starts clicking off fast laps, watch for everybody in. You know, you like to be able to make your own calls. You like to use your own judgment. Here, it looks like we're making that driver change right here. There's Hutton Strickland out of the car. And Jeff Burton being strapped in. Buddy? You see the guy on the right side there. He, he's in there helping strap this guy in because there is a difference in the height and everything else for these guys. So you've got to hook up the radios, make sure everything's intact there. Oh. This will be the last pit stop for that team. Hutt Strickland came into the pits one lap down. Now he's two laps off the pace. He's a little assist there. The smart thing is just that if you feel this way, you don't need to be out there. And there's a good race car driver there. Give the race car over and not take a chance to hurt yourself and maybe somebody else. Well, medical crews on the scene just in case. We've got some of our team in through there helping get in. Get that uniform, they wait cool off a little bit. And Jeff Burton comes on track in the McDonald's car. They'll try to run a couple of races this year. Burton will for Phil Martasi. And perhaps a look at Mr. Cup racing next season. Yeah, let's get it cooled down. Rusty Wallace, 220 laps, 80 to go. You know, Neil, sometimes the, the uh, oil tank is right behind the seat there. That looked like the seat might have had him real hot. But they're pouring water all over him. It didn't look like a stomach problem to me. It looked like heat. It's hard to say, but I'll tell you what, he didn't look too sporty there. That thing, he was, it was time for him to get out of that car. You know, we was touching on something before, right before that happened. We was talking about these pit stops. You like to be able to sit down and do your own strategy and decide when to pit. When these other teams start making you do things, you know, pit early, and then, like you said, Mike, you can't let them go out there. Your tires are beat to the dead. So somebody's going to make a move here in a minute, and the whole field's going to have to kind of roll with a punch and change, and change their attitude what they're going to do. Well, I'll give you an example, Neil. Mark Martin's the fourth-place car, and he's gaining on Sterling Marlin. Harry Gant got fresh tires about 15 laps ago. He passed Mark like Mark was stopped, and Gant is now a straightaway ahead of Mark Martin. That's what tires will do for him. Rusty Wallace go under Jeff Bodine there. That car is just flawless right now. He's able to drive anywhere he wants to. We talk about good flat track drivers. That's Put Rusty two. Wallace's name near the top of that list. Those two guys, yeah. both of them. Jeff Bodine's as good as there comes on flat track. So Jeff is the 13th place car. It leaves us 12 cars on the lead lap here at New Hampshire with at least one pit stop to go and another 75 laps of racing. We'll be right back. Man, we need a race here somewhere. You're not kidding. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Burton's flying. Look at him go past Ricky Rudd. Just zoom. Okay. How's that? I can't hear you. <clears throat> I don't see a race on the racetrack right now. Some days are like that. Let's see what we got. I think they six in the eight car turn two. How about that, buddy? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> you did. Well, I said that last time. He finally caught up to him. I could see him gaining a little bit, and then he turned the six car sideways. Okay. Good to know. You know what? We'll let him speculate a little. Huh? What? No, I can't say it. I'll tell you later. Okay. Rusty Wallace continues to lead the inaugural Winston Cup event at New Hampshire. Welcome back to our TNN Live coverage. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet and Buddy Baker. Glenn Jarrett and Randy Pemberton on pit road. 
This has been the best race on the speedway. Sterling Marlin just got up to and past Mark Martin. That'll be for third place behind Wallace and Davey Allison. Sterling started his Winston Cup career in Nashville, Tennessee, his home racetrack, back in 1976 at the age of 17. Been on the circuit pretty much ever since. Been a second at Daytona earlier this month. Looking for that first Winston Cup win. Today could be the day. Mark Martin looking for his season's first win. I think Mark Martin's car is working quite well. You see Greg Sachs has been in the pit. And he's motoring right on by. You see Mark having to take a wider line there. This battle seven seconds behind the race leader. There's the car's been out twice and got new tires on there. Look at him go. Yep. Just like Mike was talking about earlier, I mean, you just can't give up that kind of time. One of these no. leaders might make that early call, and it's going to beat them in the ground. As they all That's it. The difference, Neil, so far, nobody on the lead lap has come in for tires. Now, Jeff Bodine, as you see there, just coming out of Bud Moore's pit. As soon as he got lapped by the race leader, he came in for tires. Sterling Marlin almost in the fence at turn two. Now, way up in the marbles, as we've seen several drivers do today, Dale Jarrett has to check up in the middle of the back stretch and almost run over top of him and finally goes to the inside. I mean, you just, when he had that problem, he just going to drop anchor and start over again. Yep. Yeah, you get in loose stuff up there. All the shavings off these tires are on the right-hand side of the racetrack. Ooh, still not too good. He got up there and he started sliding and it looked like he was going to tag the wall and he just had to stop almost and then go down the back straight away. I'll show it to you again. You get up into that loose stuff and get the tire debris on your tires and start sliding. And the second thing you think of is if you just get me out of this one, I promise I'll be good. That's yeah. when he's seen Elvis, right there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You get out there and that stuff, and you say, why did he stop so slow? Well, if he'd have kept going, he'd have ran in the wall coming off turn two. Yeah. I mean, you've got to get it down to control speed, like driving on ice, just to get the car stopped, where you get it, just regroup and go again. Ninth place. These fellows were battling for ninth place 100 laps ago. And they're still doing it. Bill Elliott and Bobby Labonte. like the carbon copy of what we saw. Hunter left to go. Labonte on the inside, the left mouth side. Here he goes off the corner, pulls him off there. Labonte's able to get on the inside of time and time again. It's hard to get around that left car. Bill Elliott's best finish this season. Sixth. Charlotte Morris. How would you like to make a bet the first of the year of Bill Elliott when finished any better than sixth up to this point in the season. You just wouldn't have, nobody would have been. You could have got better odds than that, winning that Powerball thing or whatever that was. Yeah, exactly. A big lottery check. Jeff Bodine almost hit the wall in two a minute ago. He got up into the marbles and bring it back down. Well, let me tell you, these guys are, this is the longest green flag run they've made. They're stretching it to get into that real safe window and trying to just pit with a few laps to go. This is the longest green flag run they've made, and they're using up their tires a little bit more. These cars are eight seconds from going a lap down. There are 12 cars on the lead lap. Wallace the leader, Allison second, Martin is third, Jarrett fourth, Marlin fifth, Rudd is sixth, Gordon seventh, Petty is eighth. Then this battle, ninth and tenth, Elliott and Bobby Labonte. Then Brett Bodine is 11th. And Jimmy Hensley is 12th. Jimmy Spencer just made the move that we saw early. He's right up on the wall then in one and two. He had the same thing happen. Starting to happen to a lot of cars. Kenny Bouchard in the 85 car. And the race leader in traffic, Wallace. I think that's what happened to Spencer where he was trying to pick up the pace and not go a lap down, lose another lap. He sailed her off and won the lap before, and I mean, he was up there about to knock the fence down. Now, Spencer is racing Mus uh, Musgrave there for position. And Davey Allison closes up in traffic on race leader Rusty Wall. You know, we talked earlier, Davey was going that round of the bite out. We were talking about how much time was left. Now, do you take it out? When he comes in, they're going to look at one more run. You're not going to have that option to put it in and take it out. They're, going to have, they're really going to uh, reevaluate this thing and decide if they want to make that major adjustment. That's a good part of radio communication between the pits and the driver. I guarantee you every lap they're talking about, what can we do to make this car better for the last run? 
Well, they're about five laps from having to make that decision for the final pit stop based on the number of laps they've run in the green thus far today. There are 65 left in this race. This is as close as we've seen Davey Allison get to that two car in a long time. I don't know if there's traffic or Davey's picking the pace up right here, but sure closed it down. Rusty Wallace has had four wins, a bunch of top five finishes, and two horrendous flips this season. And his wins have kind of come in spurts. And he could be on another string here. His flips have come in spurts. Oof. Man, what, what some rides Rusty's taken. And I tell you what, an energy for a driver to have. Stuff like that just doesn't affect someone like Rusty. He knows they got good safe race cars. they got cars can win races. Got to take them in stride and move on to the next race. Yeah. I love to hear Rusty talking about Earnhardt. You know, they, they really have a competition second to none as far as the way they <laughs> love to race each other and all. Right. And he said that Earnhardt's closed in on you. He's got four wins, too. I'm going to have to run another one just to get ahead of him. <laughs> Today could be the day. Let's get down to Glenn Jarrett on Pit Road. Well, Mike, more problems for Sterling Marlin other than getting out of shape a while ago. NASCAR has reported to them that there's something coming out of the overflow on the car. I asked Ken Wilson, the crew chief, and he says, yes, the temperature on the car is creeping up a little bit. They're regularly scheduled pit stops coming up in a couple of laps, so I'm sure they're going to try to address that problem, but it's awfully hot. It's going to be tough to cool that car down. Sterling Marlin, who won accolades from the anybody but Earnhardt fans here at New Hampshire a bit earlier in this race. Jimmy Spencer is in. Now he's two laps down, but making a pit stop, and they got tires up on the wall for Davey Allison. And if Davey stops, we'll see the rest of the leaders in very shortly. Pit board is out for Allison. Here he comes. Boy, those new tires going to feel good because these guys were slipping and sliding a little bit. Because these four new tires on these other guys can't wait long. The gas can in the air for Ricky Rudd as well. There's Davey. He's got plenty of brakes left. Man. You see the front lock up. Ted Musgrave is in. They're not doing anything to the uh, adjustments on the car. There he goes. He's going to he do goes. it. Okay, here we go. There's that thing Davey requested. One round. Half a half round. round they, the they satisfied each other. They went a half a round. <laughs> that was a negotiated settlement. And as they go down pit road, Davey says, did you take that round out? They said, yeah, we sure did. A half a round <laughs> out of the right rear. Boy, was that a compromise. So now Jimmy Hensley and Ernie Irvin come to pit road. Hensley was the 12th place car on the lead lap. Rusty Wallace continues to lead as Sterling Marlin, Bobby Hillen, and Wally Nollenbach come to the pit lane. Sterling Marlin is coming slowly down pit road. Boy, it takes him a long time at the speed they're having to run now. He pulls the car in. Right now they're concerned with changing all four tires and fueling the car. I don't think that they're going to try to address that heat problem. They're just going to hope that it doesn't get any worse. They're going to take sure, take time and make sure that they get the front grill section clean so that the airflow is not blocked. But boy, other than that, this pretty routine pit stop. They are making a chassis adjustment on both the right and the left rear. They said the car was a little tight. It was a little over 21 seconds, so they're trying to loosen the car up. Hope that heating problem doesn't get any worse. Kyle Petty has come on to pit road, Glenn, and so has Brett Bodine. Here's Rusty Wallace, the race leader. I'll tell you guys, there was, there was great discussion as to when to bring Rusty in. They saw Davey come down pit road. The parrot guys were talking about when to bring Rusty in. And the problem being is Davey goes out there with fresh tires. He's getting around the track a lot quicker. They wanted to bring him in right off the bat, but Davey got two laps on fresh tires, so he may have opened up a lead. We'll see. I don't know, with pit stops like 17.4 seconds there on the Keystone clock, that will be pretty good for Buddy Parrott and the crew to get Rusty back to the front. Here's Mark Martin's team, led by Steve Meal. He'll get four tires. Mark came in to the pits as the second place car. This will put Jeff Gordon into the lead. Bobby Labonte is in, Ricky Rudd is in, getting four tires, so is Rick Mast and Michael Waltrip. Bill Elliott takes on four, and now Jeff Gordon will surrender the lead bring his DuPont Chevrolet to the pit lane. You see Ricky Rudd going out. He passes by Bobby Labonte and will roll past Bill Elliott there on the left. Ooh, no he won't. Elliott comes out. Gordon drops in. Ray Everham and crew go to work. Get an idea right here. We saw Rusty Wallace's pit stop while ago. Get an idea what's happening here with this team. This will leave Terry Labonte as the only driver on the lead lap yet to pit. Now, they took a full round out of the back of the uh, DuPont car there. 20.6 seconds. 
seconds. About three seconds different than we had with Rusty Wallace. Morgan Shepard is on pit road. And so is Kenny Bouchard. His green flag pit stops continue. We'll be right back. That's going to be interesting. I want to see how much difference it was being at the far end down there when they come out. Well, yeah, Davies right. lead. Yeah, but the thing right. is, Davies leading Rusty. Those tough laps, eh? But not yeah. by much. No, I mean, but Look at now Rusty. in traffic, Rusty, Look at come Rusty coming. Oh, good point. Let's see that. Hurt. Oh, we need to see this. <laughs> Look at this. 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 <laughs> you drive me crazy. You know that? Well, that's what that's what Shane says. You know, you might know I'd marry a gunfighter, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Look, uh, <laughs> look at Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the? Oh, look at this. The exclusive oh, oh. coverage of the oh, Select 5300 is brought to you by Coors Light. The silver bullet is the. What was that? That was a billboard. They were practicing. I'm gonna have to do my Schwarzenegger if you show that, Patty. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, well. Oh. Why is there no tread on the tires? Oh, come on. <laughs> Buy a newspaper. Buy it. Read the magazine. Why is your foot smooth? <laughs> <laughs> Donald, that's a good question. But, you know, this is a good question. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We got a lead battle. We got a lead well. battle. Mm. Okay. TNN's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 is brought to you by Coors Light. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. That's a wheel off Rusty Wallace's car. It's a sticker tire, one they did not put on on this pit stop. Wallace went for scuff tires. Davy Allison put on sticker tires. Junior, you would think stickers would be better. And they, they opted to go with the scuffs. They might have found something in practice that's going their way. We'll find out here in a minute because that's about as close together as we can get them. A lot of times you'll change and put new tires on the left side and old tires on the right side to take up for deficiency in the handling on the car. And as you see, the two cars were certainly working well. He's run down the 28 car and closed in here to make it a battle for the lead. Mike, I think you hit on it earlier when you said that two laps that Davey stayed out on fresh tires got those quick new tires quicker than Rusty and they didn't get back and we saw what a tremendous stop Rusty had. Davey had a good stop too, but those new tires might have been the distant And difference. also, to be fair, while we were away as Darrell Walter goes to pit road, uh, Davey did get caught in quite a knot of race traffic and Rusty was able to scramble back up on him. Of the cars that were on the lead lap, you see Terry Labonte just behind Rusty Wallace. He has gone a lap down after these pit stops. And also, Kyle Petty had a 33-second pit stop and has gone one lap down. So that leaves us on the lead lap with 50 to go with Davey Allison, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Dale Jarrett, Sterling Marlin in fifth, Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, Bill Elliott, and nobody. That's it, nine cars. Jimmy Henson. Jimmy Means has gone to the garage. What do you think track position is not so not very critical? Rusty, the guy down a while ago, and nobody could touch him. And Davey gets out front now, and it's like he's driving away from Rusty. Well, Rusty had a little bit of trouble getting by some life over cars there, and he, I think he'll catch right back up because the car seems to be doing anything he wants it to do. But he got in the pack there, and I tell you, track position, as you said, is very important. And Davey Allison is now opening up a little room on Rusty. Well, we, saw him make that, <laughs> we saw him make that chassis adjustment that they were, you know, they were wanting, and they compromised the one with half around. Help the car. Boy, Rusty can get those left side wheels all the way below the line to pop that corner. 254 laps complete. You know, it's amazing when you think about it. these cars weighing 3,500 pounds. And you can crank those wedge boats 10 rounds this way, 10 rounds that, change springs two or 300 pounds around the shocks, and then you get it down to so fine tuned in a half a round. Makes a difference. It's amazing. 
Terry Romani right here. He's running as well as Rusty Wallace is at this moment, right? He just got messed up on the track a while ago, but he's run well all day. Yeah, he was the last of the cars on the lead lap to make a pit stop, buddy. The winner gets 175 Winston Cup points, plus five points for having led at least that last lap of the race. Every driver who leads a lap gets five points. The driver who leads the most laps gets another five-point bonus. So it's 175 for first, then 170 for second. It drops down five points per position for the first seven spots. Then it drops down four points for a while, then three points for a while. All the way back, so everybody gets at least some points. It's a little bit of a confusing system. Developed by uh, Bob Latford, then NASCAR publicist back in the early 70s, and it worked pretty well. You know, it's kind of confusing, but when we get down to the end of the season every year, we've got three or four guys within just a few points to win the championship, so it's pretty balanced. Yeah. Rusty underneath Morgan Shepard. Shepard, 15th position, two laps down. That wreck real early must have hurt it because yeah. his car was really good, and that thing has knocked him off the pace some. They lap around this track at an average of about 125 miles an hour. And again, you saw it's almost a 3,000 RPM difference from the middle of the corner to the end of the straightaway. So, you know, really slowing it down compared to their straightaway speeds. I think, what do we see on the telemetry? 160 going into the turn? Right at 160 miles an hour. Two Hendrick cars battle for position. And two Hendrick cars, one with great trouble, one without. <laughs> One without, I mean, with trouble is, in, is having trouble. You know, there might not be too many fellows in this sport better at conserving their car than Ricky Rudd. I think he's one of the best slick track drivers that we have on the whole circuit. He's just moved past Jeff Gordon, and Rudd will move up into sixth place. One at Michigan last month, four top five finishes this year. You know, on a flat track, a guy that runs well on the road course normally runs well on a flat track. Other than you, man. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Too many right in turns confuse me. Well, here we see him. But there's a lap traffic. Like tell that he was in good trouble. Held up the five car. Here's Gordon right behind him. It just see? stops you when you get in that traffic. Yep. Now, see Jeff's car kind of work outside there. Ricky's already back in the throttle. He lost a lot of time there. Very smooth. Now, Driver what? Road is. Now here's Rusty Wallace again, second place chasing Davey Allison. He got into a little traffic trouble here a lap ago. Let's show you. Runs up on Derek Cope. Boom. Wham, there we go. Rusty's car's running really fast through the middle of the corner. He ran up on 898, attacked him in the rear side. Now that looks like, you know, a thump, but there's only a two or three mile an hour difference between the speeds of those two cars at that point. I mean, it's certainly it's enough to feel, but is it is it enough to upset one of those cars? Well, they're probably running 135 miles an hour right there. But like you say, it was a two mile an hour lick. It didn't cause any problems to show the guy around. The point. real problem is losing two or three seconds to the car, and that really hurts. Heck, we we parked cars with bigger bumps than that. <laughs> Turned in rental cars with bigger yeah. <laughs> bumps than that. Not that we'll admit to. Let's admit to a commercial and come back with a finish of the Select 5300 at New Hampshire International. Davey Allison leading Rusty Wallace. You looking for this potato launcher? 1.1 between first and second right now. Okay. I believe the stickers might have been. No, he ran in the back of Derek Cope. Oh, I know that. I mean, but before that, he was pulling away a little bit. Yeah. David's beginning to stink his thing up now. That's a game, you know, you play. Some, like you said, the bear. Yeah. To, uh... Okay. You want to uh, talk about Talladega at all? Me? Yeah. Or not yet? Uh... Well, I still got a lot of talking to do. Okay. Lucy! 
<laughs> you, you got some spleen in the dude. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a good look at New Hampshire International Speedway from our Ray Bestus Brakes helicopter camera. And you see there's almost a straightaway between turns three and four up there, Neil. Just a little bit of one. Almost makes it a four-corner racetrack. Certainly different. I'll tell you what, but when they laid the thing out, they really thought about what they were doing. It enables these cars to get around this thing without getting a lot of problems. We've seen cars have trouble and regain control. That's what I like about it. This car hasn't had much trouble today. Davey Allison, the guy he's tracking has had a bit there, Dale Earnhardt brake problems on Earnhardt has slowed Earnhardt's progress. He is 27, three laps down. And his closest pursuer in the points chase, Dale Jarrett, is running fourth right now. So that may be a difference of 80 or 90 points that Jarrett could pick up today. He cannot take over the lead, even if Earnhardt were to fall out of the race. Earnhardt moves over, lets the leader pass. Waltrip just ahead of him is only one lap down. Well, excuse me, has just gone two laps down. There's a knot of cars. Kyle Petty is a lap down. The other Felix Sabati's car, Kenny Wallace, the dirt double Pontiac, right with him. That was a ninth place right there. Yep, a lap down. Kenny is three laps back. There's Jimmy Hensley racing Kyle for ninth place. One lap down, Hensley and Curley for number seven. And just behind them, Bobby Labonte, he's also one lap down and is part of that battle. So that's all for position, not including Ernie Irvin, who is two laps behind. See the 22 car, he was up there earlier. Labonte was up there racing with Elliott. Now he's back here with Jimmy Hensley. And here's your Napa Field standing update brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. We have caution on the racetrack. I don't see anything, Mike. It might be debris or something. I don't see anything on the track. 30 Any laps cars. to go. And... Ooh. It is a debris caution. NASCAR has observers stationed all the way around the racetrack to see if there is something on the track that could cause one of these drivers a safety problem. And there it is. What is it? Might get in here tight enough. We can tell what we got here, Mike. It's tickets to next year's oh, race. It's a, it's a hub off of an axle. That comes. That's the hub cap that holds the axle in the rear end housing. It's got four little bitty Allen head bolts, and it's come out of somebody's rear end. You see the lines on that thing. That other lines it lines up as lug studs, so they know where to put the wheel on. That's somebody's broken axle. I definitely puncture a tire if you run over it. So they did the right thing there by by throwing the caution. Somebody's going to be wondering where their axle's at. That holds the axle in. Yeah, when they go to hit the accelerator and only one wheel's turning, they're going to find out the hard way and hurt. Wait till a pit crew member tries to put a tire on there. We'll see it first. It'll yeah. start smoking pretty good, too. <laughs> so Davey Allison sees his lead go away as a piece falls off someone else's car. Do you think they'll stop? Yeah, I would. As, as, much as, think, new, as much as new tires mean here, there are only, uh, buddy, there's only seven cars on the lead lap. Well, that, I would think you'd have to There's stop. your answer right there. I would say they will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, nice of you to guess now, Mr. Bonnet. <clears throat> so Davey Allison leads Rusty Wallace down pit road, but everybody did not stop. Here's Mark Martin in Dale Jarrett. Brett Bodine comes down pit road, and you see the two pit stops from among the leaders. Now, of the cars on the lead lap, here's Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, and Jeff Gordon also win. Rusty Wallace, fast on pit road again. 17.1 seconds. Boy, they continuously do that. Davey Allison, 19.3. What might have made that look a, more, a little more offside than it was, Rusty got in his pit first, and they started quicker, but still, you see Rusty going out first. On the watch, a 1.8 second difference. All the cars on the lead lap pitted. Let's see what happens. Tell me. 26 pitted too soon. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, I didn't want to say it till they did, but. Ooh, Michael Walton. Ooh. A couple of them hit it. Labonte. We're not through yet. 
Trickle missed it. <laughs> Clamp. Missed Cow it. Went, ooh, Oops. Hit it. it. Spencer took it home. No, no, no. Uh, Hensley. Mean, Hensley. Hensley, yeah. yeah. Missed it, hit it, missed it, hit it. Where did it go? Oh, there it comes. Oh. I think Davey should have. You mean nobody went and got it? Oh, give me his name. Stan what? Okay. Well, we got to use that. We got to get better cameramen. Hey, how about our uh, how about our historical footage, Michael? Coming back. <laughs> a little bit of that. <laughs> Check this out. Watch this. Look at this. Good reverse. <clears throat> Boom. Okay. Hensley. Yeah. We're back under caution here at New Hampshire International Speedway, sixth one today. We talked about the hub lying out in the middle of the track. Watch this. Jimmy Hensley. The seven car did all the work for NASCAR. He picked it right up and took it all the way in the infield. Stan Sobolak, our cameraman, gets the shot. And here it comes. He must shoot a lot of baseball. It's about that size. He'd be good shooting a golf ball off a driver. Yep. And what was crazy about it, it rolled right up to the safety truck. They just opened the door, got out, and they got it. <laughs> hey, Stan, nice job. <laughs> up on that scissors lift. And this from our Ray Bestus. Brakes. Aerial camera. Mike Peavy of Boston is piloting the chopper today, and George Shaftson of Melbourne, Florida is our cameraman. One lap to go, and we're going to find out who's, who wins this here at New Hampshire. After the run down pit road, Rusty Wallace is the race leader. Davey Allison is second. Mark Martin is third. Jeff Gordon is fourth. Dale Jarrett is fifth. Sterling Marlin is sixth. Jeff Gordon tries to clean the tires, moving back and forth. Seventh is Ricky Rudd. Eighth is Bobby Labonte, and ninth is Bill Elliott. There's the hat of the week. There's Buddy Parrott with the uh, <laughs> belt overhang of the week. I'll tell you one thing, it's going to be critical right here. Just like when Rusty makes a start, the guy that breaks that inside line and gets around those lap cars, if he can get that inside line, and Davey doesn't, right on the start, it'll be critical. Clean those tires good, boys. Bobby Labonte is going to try to get back on the lead lap here. He and Bill Elliott and Kyle Petty there are racing for position. Jeff Gordon sitting here in four. Run a good race all day. Rusty Wallace used to be one of the best when he starts with the transmission stuff he had run. But it looks like both of the leaders are going to be able to clear the lap cars before they get down in turn one. And back to all three leaders. 27 laps to go. Pontiac, four, four, and two Chevrolet. You know, Mark Martin might be the sleeping giant here. That car is running well. He's taking a look Ooh. inside of Allison right at the back Elliot, straightaway. Elliot inside of Labonte. Now that's for position right there. That's for eighth place. Let's go back up toward the front. Second place, Davey Allison. Third place, Mark Martin. So yeah, Davey's car Whitley's that outside lane. He couldn't get a hold of the track. Like you want to do. Mark's got that inside line going to turn one. Which one of these Fords will be up there to challenge Rusty Wallace? Rusty's hoping they stay tied for a while. <laughs> that would benefit him. Martin makes the pass. Davey drops in line, and they will again try and run down the Pontiac of Wallace. Six car is the pool setter for this race. Got a lot of race car. Like Mark's ready to get after him. I don't think there's anybody on this racetrack more motivated to win a race than Mark Martin. There he is. Full face helmet. That piece of vacuum cleaner hose going back to a Oh, cool look, air can. Look at the crowd going by in the back window there. You think they're not moving along? Look at Davey Allison coming up. Boy, taking a look at that inside. <laughs> See how hard he holds that throttle down this time, buddy. Well, we saw 8,400 a while ago. That time is not quite as much RPMs he had before. Well, back yeah. straightaway, don't, you don't run as fast as you do down the front straightaway for some reason. See what we And Ricky Rudd comes up, takes a spot from Sterling Marlin. Okay. Whew. Bonnie. The eight car had a little contact above that corner. Rudd moves up to six. Rick Math and Terry Labonte get together. Mast in the skull car. Labonte going underneath. The Kellogg's machine. And Jimmy Hensley coming back. Jimmy is a lap down. That was Bobby Labonte and Jeff Bodine for position and Morgan Shepard.
proof. There's Jay Marcus spinning now. Uh oh. Looks like he and Rick Wilson may have got together. Nope, he, no caution. He's gotten going. It will not be a caution. We stay green. Boy, look at Mark Martin now. We saw Rusty and Davey battling back and forth all day long. Well, when they shot a little go, Mark Martin was coming in on that two car. Mark almost got a piece of that outside wall coming off the corner. Mark really working on that car now to get him up on that two car, Rusty Wallace. And that's great. That's a pretty shot, dude. It's a pretty shot when you see that leader and you got him that close. Yeah, yeah man. Let's show it to you again. Dave Marcus and Rick Wilson. They got together going down turn one. Wilson to the inside. Mark, I mean, Marcus didn't quite get that ball out there. That's what's nice about this track. You got a little bit of room to work with. And we stay under green. Mike Walter comes to pit road with a Pennzoil car to the attention of Katie Haas and the crew. Yep. <laughs> Katie Haas works for TNT. She's done it. She's got another job. She's working in the pits this week. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, guys, Rusty Wallace on that last pit stop, he certainly didn't like the way he was not able to catch Davey prior to that last caution. They took one round of bite out of the left rear, try to loosen him up just a little bit, and go ahead and let him drive it. So he could get a little loose by the end of this race, but at least he's got the ability now to free the car up to come off the corner. And uh, you'll watch him. He's a little loose coming on the board. Aren't you? Pretty loose. <laughs> I'd say he is. You're right. He had that back end hung on that car. We still got 20 laps to go in this race. And you can live with that for a little while, but it'll start hurting you later if you break that rear nose very many times. There's the pack bearing down on Jeff Gordon. Al Petty and Bill Elliott are racing for a spot, but Dale Jarrett and Ricky Rudd are trying to get up and battle Jeff Gordon for fourth place. There's Gordon. And he's got Kyle separating him from those next two cars. Rick Wilson trying to finish this one out. He definitely has brake problems. I think it might have been what happened with uh, Marcus a while ago. He ran, ran in behind him and just couldn't slow down and popped him out the back. We see the eight car started hard on that back. He's seventh place right behind Ricky Wood, who's six. Closing in. One car very slow in the back straightaway, Terry Labonte. 15th place. A lot of smoke out of the back of the uh, Had a good run going today. Well, he turned off that return road there. That's a real good thing to have at this racetrack. You don't have to run through the corner or something happens to your car. They do have a road that goes all the way around the inside of the infield. So the former Winston Cup champ, Labonte, will apparently head for the garage. There's Mark Martin. He's, trying, he's hoping to see that back end jump out in front of that car in front of the time, too, like he did before. See that happening, he'll set up on the AJC so he can get Rusty back. Let me tell you, Rusty can live with the car that's loose. Well, I'll tell you one thing, this car is handy. Look at him with that corner. I really barely moving. These, these are two of seven cars on the lead lap. Wallace looking out the windshield. He's your race leader. You're riding with Mark Martin, the second place car. Davey Allison is third. Jeff Gordon is fourth. Dale Jarrett is fifth. Sixth is Ricky Rudd. And seventh is Sterling Marlin. And... and Greg Sachs has been to the wall. Well, and again, it looked like he made contact that time. He got all wet and he got the right runs down on him. Yep. But we'll stay green. One lap down. Eighth is Kyle Petty. Ninth is Bill Elliott. Tenth, Bobby Labonte. Eleventh, Jimmy Hensley. Twelfth, Jeff Bodine. And thirteenth, Brett Bodine. Boy, a lot of sparks out from under that car. He's really got a lot of damage there. Here comes Kyle Petty up under Jeff Gordon. This is not for position. No, but what it's doing, with him having to race outside of that 42, right behind him, those guys that are racing for position are really going to try to cash in on this. Yep, here comes Dale Jarrett. Moving up on Jeff Gordon and solo Ricky Rudd. Two laps down in 14th is Morgan Shepard, 15th is Ernie Irvin, 16th Rick Mass, 17th Jimmy Spencer, 18th is Harry Gannon, 19th Ted Musgrave. Three laps down, Bobby Hillen, Kenny Wallace, Derek Cope, Daryl Waltrip, and Mike Waltrip. That you back through the top 25. You know, just watching these cars a second ago, boy, they're wiggling around a lot. These cars, I don't think anybody's perfect. They're just dealing with what they have right now. And it's time to deal with it. We're down to just a few laps to go, so they've got to get out there. Greg Sachs burned up the hub 
Moore lost a brake line on the right front of car number 68 that was on fire when he came in. They've extinguished it, but they're having trouble getting the jack under the car with that tire all the way down on the rim. Very tough break for the former modified champ. Mark Martin is closing in with 14 laps to go here at New Hampshire. We'll be right back. Yeah, and here comes Rudd underneath him. Yeah, he, he can't fight back. Nope. Just however many in that line will get by him. Oh. For its exclusive coverage of the Slick 50 300. We got all those features. We run features till 5 o'clock. <laughs> Just talk about me. Seth will be, yep. Seth will be divine. It's not like we get paid by the hour or the lap. <laughs> Rusty's pulling it back out again. Yep. <laughs> TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Slick 50 300 is brought to you by AC Delco. It's like buying time. Packed house here in southern New Hampshire. The village of Loudon usually has about 3,000 residents, not counting agriculture. However, today it's the third largest city in the state of New Hampshire. I should have said not counting livestock, but uh, some 75,000 people this area. Here's a look at Jeff Gordon. I think he's out of break. He's baby. Yep, while we were away, Ricky Rudd and Gordon got together a little bit as Rudd was trying to make the pass. He eventually did complete it. Now Morgan Shepard going underneath, not for position. Gordon stays on the lead lap, but he is now in seventh place, last car on the lead lap. You know, that's got to be the worst feeling in the world. When you mash that brake pedal and it goes to the floor going in the corner like that. Well, the worst thing is when I ate a brake pedal there. <laughs> I, broke, I broke one off at Daytona one time and fell in the floor. What are you doing using the brakes in Daytona? Well, it's nice just to feel it there. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I wanted the option of at least being there. Morgan Shepard and Ernie Irvin. That is for position. 14th place right there. The Kodak and the Sitco cars are running two laps back, battling for 14th. Both those cars got tied up in early collisions. And they have, maybe that's the New Hampshire stripe on the right front and the left rear. That's the battle of the ugly cars. Both of them look like they've been through the crashing machine. They started out kind of pretty, but not now. A lot of those cars in that pack are a lap down. Uh, like Jimmy Hensley, Jeff Bodine, battling for position. Mark Martin and Davey Allison running second and third as we get down toward five laps to go. Let's go to pit road. Here's Glenn and Mark Martin's pit. What's that about with Steve Mills? Steve, you guys are 
changed the thing all day. He looks like he got the car pretty good now, but uh, if he got anything left for Rusty, he's just trying to hold Davey off. Well, that's as good as we've been, but Rusty's outrunning us. Don't worry now about holding Davey off. We'd at least like to be the first four, but anything can happen here. We've had a pretty good day. We kind of chased the car a little bit, but we've enjoyed our day in New Hampshire. Okay, that was a very diplomatic thing to say. Well, he's another fella, Glenn, who saw this race as a homecoming. Steve Emile's from upstate New York. Worked on some NASCAR modified teams before he came south to go Winston Cup racing. This is the battle right here for position because Rusty has checked out to about a 200-yard lead in front of these guys. This is going to be the fight to the end right here for second place. Three laps to go when Wallace comes to the stripe. Rusty might get loose. You see him right there. and There's the interval coming up you know, a couple hundred yards back. But when he made that chassis adjustment, he said he won't fire him all the way. And the car now doesn't look loose at all. He has about 25 car lengths, maybe a third of a straightaway, not even, on these two cars. This maybe, maybe 10 miles the way it looks these guys yeah. chasing him. <laughs> With two to go. This is battle right here. And, and you, you could almost tell that Steve Mill felt that they really got a blessing on that last yellow flag because they were kind of out of it. Now they got a chance to at least in a second. A Ford has not won on a one-mile racetrack since Phoenix last year. And a Ford has not won a NASCAR Winston Cup race on an oval track since Atlanta this spring. There's Davey taking a look at that inside. Is Mark going to give him inside lane? That would be pretty tough to give it to him. He might take it, but he won't give it to him. You see the nose of that 28 up under Mark. Back in, jumped up under Mark a little bit right there. Austin caught it. Right. One to go. Last time around for Rusty Wallace and this battle for second place. Maybe he's going to swing out wide, try to cut the car back down to the bottom. There's Rusty coming off. He's checking out on him. Here's second place. Davey's got one more shot here at turn three to take second place money. He actually had a little bit better run on the white flag lap. He did. Rusty's going to come off turn four to score his 26th career victory, tying him with Hall of Famer Fred Lorenzen. Mark Martin, by a car link, holds off Davey Allison for second. Fourth will go to Dale Jarrett who will move to within 171 points of Dale Earnhardt, knocking 80 points out of Earnhardt's lead. Tenth Super Speedway win for Rusty Wallace. We just saw the guys running second, third, pull up beside Rusty, congratulate him. They know what a struggle he's been in the last month or so with those wrecks and everything. I tell you, he and Earnhardt keep this up, and Winston's going to kind of be <laughs> slack next year. So Rusty Wallace comes around to the red flag to the front straightaway. And let's see what happens. Yep. The Alan Kowicki victory lap. Wallace said every time he won this season, he would honor his friend, a longtime competitor and defending Winston Cup champion. The wrong way victory lap. So Rusty Wallace to all those fans along the back stretch and the campers. There he goes. Hand out the window, wave to the folks that have cheered him on today. We said one of NASCAR's best slick track drivers comes around turn number two in the opposite direction. And now coming to the attention of these 70,000 fans. No luck involved either. He did it all. We'll meet him in victory lane after this. Rusty Wallace for the fifth time this season. Victory lane. Give me your arm just a second, bud. 
been a long time. Uh, the first ever race here in Great Britain. 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 I got some good range with it. Yeah, hold on. Okay, okay. okay. Well, another weekend for the captain. He went today? First and second. Great Tracy won, yeah. I'm real proud of him. check here, bud. The effort. Rusty and Bill ran real good. He drove his car out there. All over the track, and I was in the middle of We were racing, but. You know, it was a good show, but we just didn't have enough to win it. It was a good show. 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 It was a good very good is for Mark Park. So we're about 15 seconds. Just take your time, man. Come on, you go, buddy. He's a bag. No, he's a bag. He's a bag. He's a The first ever Winston Cup race winner in New England is Rusty Wallace. When Jarrett's with him. Well, Rusty, for a guy that just drove 300 miles from 33rd place to first, you look pretty doggone cool. That car was great, wasn't it? That car was perfect today. I'm telling you, motor run great. The tires were great. Uh, you know, just everything was great. I'm telling you, I really boneheaded in the qualifying. I had the fastest car here in practice. I overdrove it and got up into the loose stuff and had to start 33rd. Let me tell you something. A little pressure on myself to perform for these guys that work real hard. I'm just happy that, uh, that Emerson or Tracy did good today and the other Penske team, and we were able to do this for them today. Uh, it's a great comeback. We weren't ever down. We were just taking a little nap, I think. <laughs> well, the nap you took qualifying. Now, which is more important to you, though? You know, charging back like this and this race or starting on the pole? Yeah, I mean, winning a race, obviously. I mean, it's a great deal. I'm just really happy to win this thing. Can't say enough for the team. And Miller Genuine Draft, AC, Pontiac, Goodyear, Roger Penske, the whole Penske Corp, and all the people make all this possible. Everybody really did a, well, a great job. You had to be pretty glad to see that last caution that gave you a chance. It looked like you and Davey were pretty even up until that last caution. Yeah, we really were, and Davey pitted before we did. We did. He got a little track position on me with fresher tires. But that's a gamble we wanted to take. We didn't want to get risk running out of gas or something. But we needed that last caution, and the guys, as usual, put a can of whoop-you-know-what on them in the pit stop. <laughs> well, you always do that. Another question now. First trip to New Hampshire up here, this track, this area. How do you like this racetrack to people, and particularly uh, over at Weir's Beach? They've been very nice to us. The people over at the resort have been really great to us, and uh, all the fans up here really been outgoing. You know, I just can't say enough for everything. This everything went perfect today. I mean, really had to drive hard, and uh, but boy, the pit crew was behind me, and they made some great pit stops. And it just feels good to be where I am right now. And I tell you what, I'm going to do. I'm not going to boast about how good we did the last first four races. I must be doggone glad to get another one because it's a tough deal. Did you ever have a feeling at any time today that you wouldn't win the race? Not really. I mean, uh, a lot of things can happen. The last pit stop, obviously, you know, I was a little concerned because we were second and Davey was pulling me. But we needed, we made a, a wedge adjustment right there at the end. We loosened the car up a little bit. I said, we can, I can drive for 30 laps. And, and I did that and it worked out. But hey, it's a whole team effort to motor, run like a, a, a clock. Buddy did a wonderful job again and the crew's just happy and we're really a, a thick uh, group of people. Uh, and I hope Miller Genuine Draft and all the sponsors enjoy it. Well, I'm sure they do. They're a very successful group of people, too. We'll let you guys celebrate for a while. Randy? Uh, we're standing here with Mark Martin uh, getting a cool drink. Of course, he's one of, the, one of the drivers in better shape here. Mark, sat on the pole, could have won the race, maybe you and the Cal bonus, but you finished second. You got you to gotta be happy about uh, the way the car ran here today. Uh, we gave him all we had. Rusty was driving his, his tail off. He was all over the place, and I was gaining just a little bit on him. I thought maybe I could put some pressure on him and get him to wobble out of the groove but as you know as i got closer he got dug in found him a good spot to run and and uh i couldn't do it and then right at the end i just had to fight for my position with davy real proud of this valvoline team these cars i believe that this is what you're going to see in the second half from this team and i wish we could have won but they did a great job ran real good and they beat us today we missed it just ever so slightly and never really got the car perfect but got it better there at the end first time here you only get a chance to run really 30 or 40 laps during practice so this was a really a practice run as well as a, you know a run for the roses so to speak but how many different times did you have to change the car during the race well we fought ours we changed it once and did what we should have done to it 
and it went junk on us. And we went to the back. Then we had to come in and change it back to the way it was when we started. And of course, that was too loose, I could, just like it was. So then I had to fight that. And then, so then we started working on it again, and we finished the race about like the adjustment that we made that was junk. So, heck, we were just we were confused, you know. We just didn't have quite hit it. I believe that we had the car to beat uh, before the racetrack started uh, coming apart yesterday afternoon, and that sealer kind of threw me a loop, and I couldn't get a hope like I needed to. Yeah, well, you got some notes for next time back. Good luck next time here. Okay, back to Victory Lane with Glenn Jarrett. Well, Randy, the awards continue here. Here, This is Buddy Parrott, the crew chief, that uh, Rusty was applauding so much. And on behalf of TNN Motorsports and Miller Genuine Draft, Buddy, we're presenting you with the Miller Genuine Draft Pit Crew Award for that fine work you guys did. Congratulations. Thank you very much. On behalf of all the team members, they're the ones who did it. You know, we did a 17-second pit stop with a new crew member on that last stop. And uh, I think that was a lot that told the difference of the story of the race. And uh, But Rusty went out there and took the lead one time, you know, he, gave, he took the lead when we went out second, and we gave him the lead then and didn't relinquish the lead. So uh, they did a great job, and I'm real proud of this Miller Junior draft crew. Well, you guys have been making those kind of pit stops all year long. In fact, it started, at, I guess, about the middle of last year. You really work on that, don't you? Well, we really do, you know, but the uh, last few races, you know, we hadn't had a chance to really do anything. But uh, today we, show, we were showing them again, you know, so uh, everybody was real happy, and the guys did a great job. And like I said, we did have a new member on the pit crew today, and they did a heck of a job. Well, I know that you enjoyed your stay at the resort over at Weir's Beach because I saw you over there on the beach with some white shoes and some legs that were almost as white. I tell you what, we stayed over the Nashua over there, and those people treated us excellent. I tell you what, they, they couldn't be any nicer. You know, uh, I like to thank Mr. Bear up here for make, putting the racetrack together. This this great, you know, and uh, and just hopefully uh, we can get out of this place, you know, the, the traffic and all. But I tell you what, from the first race I came up here in 1991, He's done a heck of a job. Well, they've all done a heck of a job, and congratulations to all of you. Mike? They had quite a time. They were at the Boat Slip restaurant last night, and they had a very quiet table in the back because I guess they'd had a real noisy, rowdy one up front Friday night. Rusty Wallace and Victory Lane will be right back. I didn't want to say they were on probation. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this. I mean, you can't believe how much I treasure this after the stuff we were in. And I really told everybody I thought we were going to get out of the well, so we get around here. We really started getting out around Dover Dow. Okay. And you got a full field. Before we kicked them off and, and brought it back, and uh, this is going to be a great show coming through just for a long time. Hmm. With me? No, I have Neil and Buddy with me. Inside, in the booth. You want us outside? Oh, Ken. Okay, Ken is out on outside on the roof. Um, Patty, how long are we going to fill? How long are we going to stay? Okay, sorry. Question is, what happened to Stormy? Brakes? Didn't they say brakes? Oh, of course, I don't know. Yes, they were. Yeah, they were well, hot. But, oh, hot held heat. Uh, that was it. I thought once they cleaned the grill off, it quit. They did, too. It was loaded. Mm. Boom, boom. TNN Motorsports exclusive coverage of the Slick 50 300 is brought to you by Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Many of the 70, 75,000 people here at New Hampshire International staying around to watch the trucks load up and load out. Rusty Wallace, the winner. Mark Martin finishing second in a Ford. Davey Allison's Ford is third. Dale Jarrett and Ricky Rudd in Chevrolet. It's, that's the top five. Then Sterling Marlin, Jeff Gordon, all on the lead lap. One lap down, Kyle Petty, Bill Elliott, Bobby Labonte, Jimmy Hensley, Jeff Bodine, 
and Brett Bodine, then two laps back, Morgan Shepard, Ernie Irvin, Rick Mast, Harry Gant, Jimmy Spencer. Three laps down come Darrell Waltrip, Bobby Hillen, Kenny Wallace, Derek Cope, Mike Waltrip, and Ted Musgrave. Then four laps back, Hutt Strickland with relief from Jeff Burton. Dale Earnhardt four laps down. Seven, seven laps behind, Wally Dollenbach and Rick Wilson. Further back, Kenny Bouchard, Dave Marcus were running at the finish, Terry Labonte, Greg Sachs, Dick Trickle, Jimmy Speed, Lake, Me uh, Lake Speed all in the garage, Jimmy Means. Joan Emacek and Jeff Burton had great starts and tough finishes today in their first Winston Cup starts. Ken Schrader, Phil Parsons, and Jerry O'Neill rounded out the 40-car field. Let's go down to Randy Pemberton. Well, Davey standing here. Davey, great job today. You took a bite out there with uh, prior to the last caution. It looked right. Rusty went back, did the same thing, and just a little better towards the end. Well, our car was a little bit loose, and we put a half around a bite in, and, and that really set the car up, you know, for the end of the race. We didn't need that last caution, but, you know, the luck plays an important role in this game, and, and today was Rusty's lucky day, but we got to congratulate him because they ran a strong race to come from the back of the pack like they did to win it, and, you know, we had a good race. had a lot of fun out there racing today. Um, Texaco Haviland Racing did a great job. It was fun to lead a race for a change, and, and especially fun to finish on the lead lap. But I'll tell you, Randy, I've had some orders from home. I talked to Krista last night on the phone, and she told me that if I don't tell her, hey, the next time on TV, I'm in trouble when I get back. So, hey, Krista, and Robbie, and Liz. Okay, so we got the family out of the way. Davey, did you learn anything here today? First time here, you didn't really have a chance to practice that much. I asked Mark the same question. Anything that you'd do differently coming back up here next time? Well, as odd as this sounds, I may bring a different race car. Uh, we we kind of gambled on something this weekend. Uh, it sort of worked out and it sort of didn't in some ways, but uh, we think we know what to come back with. Just wait till next year and come back and try it again. Okay, we'll see you next week. Good luck. Thanks. Mike Joy? Yeah, I think he knows and he's not telling. <laughs> Craftsman Tools. When seconds count, there's no time for second best. The official tools of NASCAR present the Winston Cup point standings. Dale Earnhardt saw a big chunk of his 251-point lead go away. He leads Dale Jarrett now by 171 points. Rusty Wallace is now as far behind Earnhardt as Jarrett was coming into New Hampshire, 250 points. Morgan Shepard is fourth. Davey Allison, fifth. Kyle Petty, sixth. Jeff Gordon, seventh. Mark Martin moves up to eighth in the standings. Ken Schrader falls to ninth, and Ernie Irvin is 10th. Jeff Bodine, 11th. Jimmy Spencer, Sterling Marlin, Ricky Rudd, and Bill Elliott. That's the top 15 in the Winston Cup point standings after 16 of 30 races. Here's Glenn Jarrett. Well, I'm standing by with Andy Petrie. Of course, he's a crew chief for Dale Earnhardt, and Andy was just one of those days. Yeah, it was, you know. Kind of been a bad weekend. You know, we had a bad qualifying run on Friday, and, you know, that kind of put us back behind there a little bit. We had a good run coming up through there made our green flag pit stop and the transmission hung in gear. So we couldn't, you know, we lost like 15 or 20 seconds trying to get that thing unhung. And we got back after our lap down and just trying to get our lap back here racing with Sterling. I don't really know what happened, but they got together and he spun. And we well, just went downhill from there. We lost the brakes after that and uh, just tried to ride it out. Well, uh, you saw a little bit of your points lead go away there today to uh, an old friend of yours, Dale Jarrett. Yeah, that's right. But I think we'll be, if we can keep our eye on the ball and do what we're supposed to do the next few races, I think we can get it back. So uh, we're not real worried about it right now. Well, in walking up here is uh, Dale Jarrett. In case you folks out in TV land don't know, these two guys went to high school together. They graduated together. They built their first race car together, Dale Jarrett and Andy Petrie. Now Dale is chasing Andy's driver. It's, it's, it's quite a story, but uh, Dale, you had a pretty good day as opposed to what uh, Andy and Dale Earnhardt had. That's what it's supposed to go, isn't it? I mean, I thought, now, let's get it straight. Andy built that first car. I didn't. I, I watched, but uh, he taught me a lot and uh, helped me get my career started. And uh, you know, now we're chasing them. You know, that's the days that you're going to have. Uh, you know, a couple times when we had bad days, they had really good days. And you know, hopefully we can close this up. I know they'd rather it not be a cakewalk. They'd rather have to work a little bit harder. <laughs> it looked like the Interstate Battery Chevrolet was pretty good under you all day. Wasn't quite good enough to run up front, but still a pretty good car. Yeah, really, at the around the halfway point, I thought I had the car to beat. Uh, I was kind of riding, and as we'd run on, I'd start catching them. And uh, I really thought we were in good shape. Then the track got slicker. And uh, as it did, our car became a little bit too loose, and uh, we couldn't adjust it to where it was any better so we just left it alone there and uh yeah i really did think that we were going to be in good shape and have the car that was going to run there with rust in them but uh, we'll take fourth it's the kind of day that we needed to uh, close this back up a little bit well congratulations again and uh, don't let the plane take off without me we'll be through here in a little bit mike <laughs> okay glenn <laughs> hope you've enjoyed the views from our ray bestest brakes aerial chopper today right now those views are of traffic leaving new hampshire international speedway but we're not we'll be right back all you have to do is
would call one beautiful New Hampshire, one six oh three five two eight two one two three. Or get in touch with New Hampshire International Speedway Concession. Let me teach you something. Is Randy, I wonder if Randy's still in and ask Davey how long it's going to be. <laughs> you guys and your airplane deals. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Look at the people lined up to get over there. I used to be just like you. I'm not sure. This is what happened to us at the Winston. Mm -hmm. We stood outside in helicopter land for two hours while those MRN guys drove to the airport and beat us. Childress is taking uh, 18 people in that helicopter at $100 a shot to the airport. Pretty good. Pretty good. Five minutes from here. Yep. No problem. The Nashville Network's exclusive coverage of the Slick 5300 has been brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. Pretty good show here at New Hampshire. These folks enjoyed it. They finally got to see their first Winston Cup race up here after a quarter century of waiting. And one of the fellows who helped put on the show is with Randy Pemberton. Well, Jeff Gordon did put on a show. I asked him if he was worn out. He said, no, I'm fine. But let me ask you if you're emotionally worn out because you didn't have breaks there for a little, or at least for a good portion of that race. That must have been a little taxing on you. Well, we, we uh, can't be disappointed at all. I'll tell you, we, we had a good day. All in all, we, well, I mean, we come away with another top ten and almost pulled off a, a, another top five there. But uh, I tell you, Ray Everham and this DuPont crew, they're doing an excellent job for me in the pits and adjusting on it and getting me out as quick as they can. And uh, we just keep, you know, picking away like we are in these top tens, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get further and further up there in the points. But today we just uh, started running out of brakes, and that was our main problem. The car was off just a little bit, but uh, not as not as bad as uh, you really thought we were. I mean, the brakes just hurt us more than anything. Was the track like you thought it would be when you started this race at the finish? Was it like uh, you thought it was gonna be? Well, I didn't think it was going to tear up as, as early as it did. Uh, you know, a lot of people said, I think it's still going to, uh, you know, come up. But like the fifth lap, it started coming up. And, and I was glad that I was up front because it was just going to be single file for a while. And that's a shame because this track's got a lot more potential than that. And, uh, you know, you, you can do some side-by-side -side racing here. And I think all in all, it was a good show. But, uh, you know, I, the track basically, handling-wise, yes, it was about like I, I thought it was going to be. But then you had to slip and slide around the marbles, and I wasn't expecting that. Okay, congratulations on a good run. Thank you. Can a rookie win the Winston Cup championship? Sure, he's running for points just like the rest of them. James Hilton finished second in the rookie chase when he was a, or in the Winston Cup chase when he was a rookie. The Fram Filters 500K will be our next live TNN telecast. That's a Bush Grand National race, Saturday, July 24th from Talladega Super Speedway, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Then Sunday, July 25th, live the Mopar Mile High Nationals from Denver, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live final round coverage. And we'll be back here at New Hampshire for the Chevy Dealers of New England 250 for the Bush Cars, Sunday, August 22nd, live at 1 p.m. Eastern Time here on TNN. Well, let's get some thoughts from our resident woodchuck from the state of Vermont. Ken Squire, New England's and uh, the nation's senior race, comment, race caller, is with us and has had a chance to look and kind of overview this as we've been calling the, the lap by lap action for you. Ken? Well, thank you, Mike Joy. You know, Mike earlier referred to this race as Bob Bear's Field of Dreams, this wonderful facility. And I had a couple of thoughts about that as you look over this massive wonderful mile racing oval up here in Yankee country. A couple of things to consider. This track was built the old fashioned way. There were no municipal bonds, no state bonds, no politicians hands were greased on this one. Bob Bear actually put up about 25 million of his own dollars. A fellow that never got a high school diploma. Loves this sport so much. This is the thing he wanted to give this New England area. It's a matter of his money and a lot of fans money. Consider these fans who are here today. A fellow was walking out yesterday afternoon from over in Portland, Maine. Runs a super sportsman up there. And I was saying to him, uh, how many races have you seen on this track? He says, I've seen them all. I said, really? How come you've been to every one of them? He said, well, 
I just thought it was very important that NASCAR saw how we New Englanders felt about stock car racing. He had his money invested in today, too. And what a payoff for everyone. What a grand new facility we have here in New England for motorsports in years to come. Thank you, Bob Bear, and thanks to all these incredible fans who turned out on this magnificent day. What a day it was for a race. Mike? Ken, I think it's a day that all of us who've supported New England stock car racing over the years can well be proud of. Buddy Baker, your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm kind of like Ken. I mean, great race. Uh, I think everybody, when they come back, will be much more prepared for this type of racetrack. Have, definitely a lot of them will have better brake scoops. <laughs> Neil? Well, I think it's a great win for Rusty Wallace, but I think the big winner might be motorsports in general. Moving to new areas, big sport. It's great to see it. First track new on the Winston Cup circuit since Sears Point, California in 89. Watkins Glen before that. And next year, the series expands to Indianapolis, Indiana with the Brickyard 400, bringing the total number of races to 31. As this sport continues to grow, both in stature, in its impact around the nation, and the great places we get to go to see it run, and that we're proud to bring it to you live here on the Nashville Network. For all of us at TNN that have been proud to be a part of this first Winston Cup race at New Hampshire, for Glenn Jarrett, Randy Pemberton, Ken Squire, Buddy Baker, and Neil Bonnet. I'm Mike Joy congratulating Rusty Wallace on his fifth season victory here at Bob Bear's Field of Dreams, New Hampshire International Speedway.